What's up, guys? It's yo boy Omnisensei back with a new Naruto What If series. Reborn in Naruto as a Bito Uchiha. Part 2. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. The sword user wanted to try something. But Kagami was already in front of him, using the man's own blade to stab his lungs, while casting a powerful Jinjutsu in the man's eyes. The man fell down like a puppet from a string. There were two Kagamis now. Even Nakoto's head was spinning. What was going on, but then, she felt the tightness around her neck loosen, and the explosion seal was thrown away. The centipede user was still in a shadow possession by the other Kagami. With a quick slash of his tanto, Kagami gave deep cuts to the man's chest, while stabbing Iwan in in his stomach. He wanted to use his chakra to break free, but Kagami's own blade was coated with something. And it stopped him from using remolding his chakra. And he, too, was put in Jinjutsu, making the world turn dark. Abido on the other hand, quickly went towards Mikoto, she seemed to be okay, just paralyzed. He still did a quick check up on her. I'm sorry for saying those things I had to keep the act I hope you forgive me. He said, moving towards the unconscious Kana. He looked alright. But he was far from that he just knew how to keep appearances. But to most strange shinobis it was obvious. But Kagami didn't say anything, as Abido quickly started to heal Kana. She looked quite bad, compared to her sister. It was at that time, swarm of Kanoha shinobis rushed into the room. Quickly securing things up. The police force and the Anbu wanted to question Abido, as only he looked uninjured at the moment. But Kagami signaled them not to. A few moments ago, while the Iwa Shinobis were going to reverse summon. Abido was already in the room, keeping a safe distance away, enough to pick up what they were hearing from the wall. The Iwa Shinobis didn't seem to be sensors or skilled enough to detect him. He got out from the wall, taking out the explosive kunai. Intending to stop them. He wasn't in self-conscious let those girls and grandma get pulled into the hellhole. Sure he would probably fuck up and die, but he would rather let that happen than sit here and do nothing. Granny Mai only showed kindness till now. And maybe this was going to be his last stance. But he would make it count. Abido wanted to give a surprise attack, so he was slowly bleeding into the ceiling, but then he saw a crow, perching upside down like him. It was one of Kagami's summons. How did he know that? Well, he could feel Kagami's chakra from that crow. And what the fuck it had a Sharingan. The moment, the Sharingan wielding crow looked at Abido. He was in the Jinjutsu. Time seemed to have stopped, but he could hear someone. I am projecting my Sharingan onto the crow. He's my summon. Anyway good thing I found you first, Hatchling. Kagami's voice said. You going to kill yourself. Don't go, what do you want me to do stand here? If you haven't heard, they are going to reverse summon them, and they are going to farm them like poultry if they are not stopped. Abido's voice was hoarse at the last part. I know. Kagami's voice said, it's hard, but as a shinobi, you have to make sacrifices we always do. His voice had a hint of sadness to it. Abido didn't say anything, only feeling frustrated with himself. It would be better to let them go. I have another crow that's already in the wolf I when in shadow. There is a jutsu that can teleport my personal anbu them to their location, we just have to get them outside Iwa. We can know I promise we will rescue them you would die, before I could get here. I still need at least half a minute to get here. And you won't be able to hold them for so long. You would die by 10, and they would be gone by 20 even with help, you will lose. At least save yourself, kid. Abido didn't say anything for a while, before he looked into the crow's eye. Bullshit. I'm going to stop them. How are you sure they won't just take their eyes, have their way, and kill Granny Mai, while they're at it? Did you even consider if they already had someone directly transfer them to the Hidden Stone? Kanoha won't start a war for two or three people and sacrifice, that and this I fucking hate that word. 
If that's what you believe, then step aside Kagami Uchiha. I won't back down. Abito was saying stuff that was driven by pure emotions. Sacrifice, he hated that word. Did his sister need to sacrifice herself in that car accident? He didn't want to live then she was the only relative that he had left. Yet she was gone gone for what some bullshit called sacrifice. And that driven emotion to protect what he loved triggered something deep in Abito Ichiha. Something that changed his eyes to crimson, bleeding them red. Kagami could see everything from the crow's perspective, and he was awed. When Abito broke from the Jinjutsu. Was it the same kid that just a week ago was struggling to break from his Jinjutsu? And now this. He awakened the Sharingan, at five no less. The yellow-haired kid, and now him. The next generation is scary sometimes. But the kid would die. Even though the conversation seemed long, in real time, it only took one second. Kagami could see that Hayuga was already taken, and they needed to work fast, or they would too. So the crow stopped Abido once again. Casting another Jinjutsu. What now Abido grunted. But this time, he saw Kagami in front of him. I will help you. But try not to die I might know the centipede user I should have killed that fucker. But we need to plan. Do you understand? Abido nodded, good. Can you perform the basic clone jutsu the illusion one? Abido nodded again. Good, I have two crows and okay, here's the plan, and then they came up with a plan. A stupid one. Current time but it worked. Abido said to himself, even with how bad it was, it worked. And he didn't need to sacrifice anything for that. For Kanet Shiha, it was a nightmare. How the day started like any other. She being dragged by her sister to the hospital, to learn basic medical ninjutsu. She never liked the baldness of that type of jutsu. And unlike other jutsus, where she could master it in weeks. Medical ninjutsu would take months, for even basic healing. But she loved her sister, and kept going at it in that boring section of ninjutsu. She had little success till, she met an Ichiha boy named Abido. At first, she thought nothing of him, Kana knew his grandmother, was a capable healer. But when Abido gave her a few tips, it helped her quite a lot, she still couldn't stop blowing up the fish, but she made a leap in progress. Abido Ichiha was an untalented as they come, a late bloomer, who unlocked his chakra a couple of months ago. Where she's been practicing chakra for three years now. She was there when the age of ceremony happened, his talent was quite low. But she could tell by the sheer control on the fireball jutsu, meaning he worked hard quite a lot for it. Even the size of the fireball was praiseworthy. Then she was surprised when Abido was one of the two who kept up with Kagami Sen's unorthodox test. Then when it was later reviled that the cause of Abido's lack of talent in fire jutsu was the cause of him not having fire affinity. And she felt pity for him. How could an Ichiha be born without fire affinity? He might have a hard time being a shinobi or so she thought. But Abido proved her wrong yet again, when the hospital incident happened. Abido seemed quite calm when he figured out what had happened. And proceeded to take her out of danger's way. She was awestruck when Abido was able to keep a clear head while facing an enemy, even though she was terrified. But most of all, she was broken when she thought that Kana killed him by accident. Yet she was proven wrong, when she opened her eyes, she first saw a pale smile from Abido. The pane of glass shard sticking out of her body was gone, leaving without a scar. Her left arm, which should have been purple, due to the fracture, was healthy pink as well. Abido then proceeded to ask her a few questions about her health. And she bubbly answered. What was happening? Was it all a dream? And she was alive how? The set boy went to his grandma's side, the old lady was unconscious but okay. Then before Abido could do anything, the five-year-old boy fainted. Kagami came to him, picking him up, like a cat by the back of his shirt. Monkey, Kagami called, while an anbu wearing a monkey mask appeared. Bring the kid to a medic, he has the severe case of chakra exhaustion. Honestly, this kid's quite amazing. Did you know, he unlocked his Shuringen today I mean, come on he beat my record, and he's what 6? 5. Kana corrected. How did he awaken his bloodline that early, it was quite amazing. Both the Shinobis blinked before facing her, he's 5, that's quite amazing. But then again, you're quite amazing as well, Kana. You also unlocked your Shuringen today talent seemed to grow on trees in our clan he said, making a jealous face it looked like a pout to her. 
I'm kinda envious you know oh, well. I'm so gonna have a good time parking it here isn't for that wait, what? She froze, did she hear it right? She unlocked her Shuringen. She was way too excited, and wanted to activate her Jujutsu wait. Don't you active your Shuringen, little miss. Kagami said, crossing his hands, you don't have chakra for that, and I will need to send one of my other officers to your tending. Kana opened her mouth, before feeling a bit embarrassed. She hadn't thought of that. Then she saw her sister, Makoto coming her way, she had a bandage on her shoulder, a little bit pale. And it was when she hugged her, that Kana felt the rush of emotions. Of what happened. And how freighting things could have ended. The village of Kanoha was in an uproar. Mainly the Hyuga clan, one of the members of the main house, had been kidnapped by stone. An investigation of the incident was currently happening. Mainly what they found was one squad of Kanoha shinobi was attacked at the stone border, and was quickly brought back to Kanoha. The squad was led by Ryo Hyuga, and one of the injured sh- Iwa clearly wanted to ruin Kanoha's image, that's why they sent shinobi into the village, and committed the small massacre at the hospital. It will act as a message to the daimyos that Kanoha wasn't as safe as people thought. The cunning Inoki bastard. He had it all planned. The Iwa had great willpower and pride. They don't care about clans as much as the other village. There was a reason why two of the cages were clanless shinobis. So they only committed the incident to show other countries Kanoha's lack of security in it. Heck, even Kumo might be jealous and try to send shinobis to Kanoha for not getting a part of the Hyugas. It was news that Kanoha was getting a lot of civilians from the outside due to it being safe. This incident should have stopped it. Yet it didn't. The Hyuga head was furious. Not only had his son made a mockery of him and the clan. Due to the incident, the main heroes who came out were all at Chihas. How could Banko Hyuga take that? Kagami stopped the incident from causing more damage. While two of the younger generation of Ichihas had unlocked their power of Dejutsu, helping the adult Ichiha take care of things. And to top it all off, they weren't even seven. Curse that clan. They should have been killed along with his son, to bring shame on his name. And now, the elders of the Hyuga clan were taking steps to remove him from the clan head seat, and bring his nephew to take the next seat in the Hyuga. With how things were, he heard the news that Kagami and another of Lord Second's students will be sent to retrieve his foolish son from the enemy's hand. He only hoped that it would end up in a failure. And Ryo dies a martyr's death. Yet he was afraid of Iwa. What if Iwa managed to create another branch of Hayuga in that forsaken village? His clan would be a laughing stock. Even he saw some amused eyes from branch Hayuga clan members when he walked out his eyes. All due to his son. He had to do damage control somehow, and he knew just the man. Shimura Danzo had given him a formal letter to hand over orphan kids of the Hyuga to him, who would obviously be from the branch family, who he would train for his own separate Anbu team. Those of the Shimura clan were always power-hungry bastards. In exchange he would pull some strings from his Shimura clan to give him some extra benefits. Mainly two seats as the fire daimyo's bodyguards, that fat mastered, wanted some shinobis to guard him. And if he could get some of the main family in there, his reputation would increase. He only hoped that it would be enough to keep his seat at the current Hayuga head. Abito woke up in a well too familiar room, it almost felt like a deja vu. The familiar ceiling of the hospital wall, the scent of medicine and the awareness that you are a kid again. It almost felt like you were starting out in the world again. Abido tried to sit up, but he felt a bit rusted. How long was he out? He didn't feel any pain or headache in fact, he felt refreshed. The room door opened, and Abido half expected to see his granny Mai, but it was just an unnamed nurse. Who was wide-eyed seeing him awake. Soon the doctors came along with Mikoto, to check up on him. Mikoto didn't seem injured or tired. They said a little stuff, but Abido turned them down, he had a lot in mind. After the near-death experience, he had a lot of stuff to reflect on. At first coming to this world, he didn't want to make bonds or get attached, but the last incident changed that as well. He didn't want to be alone. Sure he wasn't technically a five-year-old, but didn't he always want to relive his childhood? And when he got the opportunity he was just throwing it away. Sure there are threats roaming around the world. But this could be his last chance in life. And he wasn't going to waste it. Abido didn't know, 
but he had fully accepted this world for what it was, without questioning it. You should be able to leave the hospital in a couple of hours. The doctor said, Dr. Mai, will be really happy to see her grandson again. Mikoto I will burden you to take him home. The doctor chuckled, before leaving. Mikoto just smiled. Mikoto-san, how long was I out? Abido asked. Ah five days actually, Mikoto said, that made Abido jolt his head towards her. He wanted to ask how honestly, how did you get that severe case of chakra exhaustion? But it's a good thing you didn't sustain any permanent damage. So my breathing recovery does have a drawback. I almost thought, I could infinitely recover my chakra with 10 seconds speed. Abido thought, before remembering something. Um Mikoto-san, I apologize again, for saying bad stuff to you, back then. I had to put up the act, and I needed to waste time I hope you don't mind. By then Abido was looking at the ground. But rather than a scalding, Abido got a hug, when he felt Mikoto's arms around his body. Don't apologize. In fact, I should be thanking you instead. Mikoto said, if it weren't for your quick thinking I didn't want to imagine what would have happened. I was prepared as a ninja, but Kana wasn't. And I didn't want her to go through, but she stopped herself, even saying those words brought horror to her. Mikoto separated, her eyes were a bit wet, anyway, you're quite a bit of a celebrity right now. So, let's get you going. What did she mean? Abido shrugged, before trying to get himself off the bed by himself, only to lose his balance, but Mikoto stopped him from falling. You have been in bed for five days remember, and with so much chakra exhaustion it will take a few hours before you can walk properly. Mikoto said, going towards the side, and taking out a wheelchair. Abido made a face. Mikoto raised an eyebrow. I can do a princess carry. She mused. I carry Kana all the time. Abido shook his head vigorously, making the Ichiha chuckle. They left the hospital, but as they were going, people would sometimes glance at them, whispering something amongst themselves. Some kids that were much older than Abido would look at him with awe, muttering something to themselves. And that made Abido frown, okay, what fuck happened while I was out? Not to mention that they got even more looks of awe, when they entered the Ichiha district. And here I was wanting to keep it low somehow, I feel like blaming Kagami for this shit. I don't know why though after that, they got to his house, and Granny Mike cried out in happiness and hugged him dearly. She looked quite relieved seeing him right now. She was fine in the attack, only getting knocked out and a rib fracture due to it, the hospital staff made a move to make her retire. Honestly, she should just enjoy her life now. When he first came to this world, a few months back, she was working to support the family cause of financial needs. But now that Abido could make ceiling scrolls, she didn't need to work. But the old lady was out of habit going to the hospital. It was a good thing the hospital made her retire. Though, knowing Mai's character, she will find a way to get back at it somehow. After staying a bit Mikoto left, and that was when Abido asked, Grandma, I have a question. The old lady was calmly sipping on her tea and just nodded to continue. Honestly, she looked quite healthy, now that she didn't need to overwork herself. And Abido also planned to learn the rest of Senju medical ninjutsu that she had, now that she would just stay at home. Getting off track why were people looking at me that way? The old lady rested her cup, honestly, I forgot Abido. She said, before standing up and walking a few steps, before coming back with a basket with some fruits, and a few scrolls. The elders have invited us to visit them when you are free. They are quite happy to see such capable talent, in the younger generation. They even gave you some of their prized jutsus, I think they want to personally train you. Abido gave a confused look also a worried one. Don't be like that Abido unofficially you helped save both of the Ichiha princesses wait, Mikoto and Kana were princesses, but it did make sense. They were children of the Ichiha head. So it did make them princesses. The old lady continued, and also helped with contributing in saving a Hayuga price as well, though that poor boy lost his eyes. Wait, Hayuga who? But then Abido remembered, that there was also a Hayuga there. Sukuno so had gotten back, it's good I guess wait was he the son of Hayuga head. He internally groaned, I grabbed all the attention that I was keenly trying to avoid. Though also the old lady had more to say, the clan is also looking forward to seeing great things from you, it's rare even for Ichiha geniuses to unlock the Shuringen at 5 years old. Oh, no. 
I actually forgot about that as well now I need to watch my back for an old creep. No two old creeps shit there might be more, if I count the elders in. It honestly made him shudder. The old lady chuckled seeing Abido's uncomfortable expression. Thinking that he was shying away. Don't worry Abido. It might seem a lot to you, but I always thought you were a genius. Did you know, there's even talk on giving you a gen in field promotion. Oh, it's official. I'm fucked. Almost a week had passed. Abido was prescribed not to train in that time to fully recover, so it should have been a quiet week. Yet, it was nothing but that. He had to visit all the Ichihaz elders' homes for either dinner or lunch, along with other clan-related stuff that drained much out of him. Visiting the elders gave him some benefits such as multiple A rank earth and wind release ninjutsu. But Abido neither had the time nor the chakra pool necessary for those techniques. Still, it was a great boon. But Abido would rather work at the Raymond shop, rather than go there and act polite to some old geezers. Abido was back at Ichiraku Raymond, and the shop was packed today, and Tucci needed all the help he could get, so Abido was doing just that. Honestly, he enjoyed working here, chatting, and heckling with customers, rather than doing shinobi politics. And while working he strictly avoided wearing the Ichiha logo, so people didn't recognize him it made his day even better. Currently, he was taking a break, and as the lunch hour was over, he could finally have some free time. But I'm not complaining, it's better to work here than to meet those old fossils. He thought, but, I did get to meet a couple of interesting characters. Mainly Fugaku Ichiha and his Omo Ichiha Fugaku was currently getting groomed to be the next family head, he's currently 16 or so, and already a high jonin. The man didn't look anything like Sasuke or Itachi it seemed that both of them got their mother's looks. Also, Fugaku was currently 16 or 17. Honestly, my man was severely lacking compared to both of his son, who were cage level shinobi by that age, and were fighting rabbit demons. Abido mused, but I have to speed up I also want to be Kaga level by then, but then again, later in the series, they all became canon folders. And secondly was Izomo Ichiha well, the old guy was a Manjiku Sharingan user, and currently, he was blind. Once upon a time, he was a great Ichiha hailed for his destructive ninjutsu, but now he was one of those Ichiha elders who were just power hungry, and wanted to do something to leave their name behind before they died. And Abido abhorred that son of a gun, speaking way too much about the clan's legacy or whatnot. Didn't that man see, ironic, because he was blind that this seer those same Ichihas had to suffer due to lack of food, and a big reason for that was the Ichiha elders themselves. And when he carefully pointed it out, that man had to gal to tell him that the weak will only suffer due to their own mistakes. That time I really wanted to say, you're blind and an Ichiha. You're the principle of weakness, you old rat. Abido mused, it wouldn't be too suspicious if that old man died suddenly and got his eyes stolen right. I just hope he dies while I'm able to farm his eyes cause, I won't be able to do that, and that made Abido move his head towards the new arrival, and he knew who it was. Oh, Kunyu-san, you're back. I haven't met you like Abido frowned, like before the incident. Kunya flinched, and looked down, she seemed guilty, yeah well, I did come to visit you in the hospital. But you were unconscious then and things came up. So, I'm sorry. Abido found it odd that she didn't visit him. Even after he was back at the Ichiha compound, but thinking again people usually didn't go inside the Ichiha compound. And Abido had some suspicion about her anyway, he was a bit sad that she didn't visit him. At least he would have been able to learn the explosive tags by now. Abido waved off his hand, nah, no prop just teach me how to make explosive tags I will forgive you. He said smiling, he stood up. The same order the girl sighed in relief, I thought you gonna be mad for not seeing you Abido placed the bowl of Maizo Raymond in front of her making her smile. And of course, she started digging in. Nah if I were to be mad at you, it would be for keeping secrets. He said with a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Call him paranoid, but after the incident, he would rather have Kunya come clean more than anything. That made the girl freeze mid-noodles looking at him. She gulped high, I don't know what you are saying. Abido chuckled, now that's us and here I thought my sensei trusted me more. I asked she wanted to say something, but nothing came to her mind. Abido gave her a raised eyebrow. The girl sighed, and looked a bit hesitant, fine, I'll tell you. 
Just come to the Hokage Mountain after the shop closes. Or you can tell here, Abito said, leaning on the counter. This time she gave him a look, and Abito put his hands up in a mock surrender, okay, as you wish. The Hokage Mountain is a good place to dispose of a body or two. Lil Almi won't see the stars tonight. She just snorted at his dark attempt as a joke. So let me get this straight you are the Kashina Yuzumaki, and you've been lying cause you thought I was shallow enough to judge you like other NPC villagers. Abito said, flatly, looking at the red-haired girl. Wow, you really held me in high regard. After work was over, Abito met Kunio on the Hokage Mountain. They actually practiced their Fuinjutsu here. And it was quite a place. And she also shared her secret, which was surprise surprise she wasn't Kunya, but Kashina. The girl's cheeks were red, well, I'm sorry okay. She said, and what's an NPC? Abito nodded, it's a Raymond side dish. Was she really excited about hearing a new side dish of Raymond? Yes yes she was. Anyway, I particularly don't care if there's a fox inside you, I'm just a bit surprised that you actually didn't tell me sooner. He said, wiping away an imaginary tear. Oh, he really was having fun today wasn't he? Well, I'm sorry. Gosh you really do like to hear me apologize don't you? Asp how did you notice? Abito mused at the red hat's expense. I didn't know you would take it that well. She mumbled before she smiled a little, and you don't look even surprised. Honestly, I am a bit surprised that you were Kashina I figured out you were in Yuzumaki, cause of your odd chakra. I'm a sensor, and even when near you I honestly sometimes can't even pick up your signature, and only Yuzumaki have shown that much chakra control in hiding their presence. Abito said. Kashina blinked and was surprised. He even knew about that. Abito continued, and just when you use Fuinjutsu, your chakra pool grows rapidly. That meant that you were trying to hide your chakra reserves. What I didn't get was your transformation jutsu. It's not the standard academy jutsu. Maybe a solid transformation jutsu. Wow, you even figured that out she said. You are quite mature for a 5 year old, aren't you Hiro-san? Abito snorted at the nickname. But why did you think it was another Yuzumaki and not me? Abito shrugged, well, I thought you would be more confident and not hide. You are nicknamed Dread Hot Habanero Kashina Yuzumaki. And there are quite a number of Yuzumaki that have been staying in Kanoha, though most of them are not ninjas, but I do see some of them. So, yeah, I'm honestly impressed, she said. And glad as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm great. Stroke my ego even more Abito said, before looking at a particular direction, at the trees. You can come out now, you peeping crow. You can come out you peeping crow. Wakashina looked at where Abito was looking, there was nothing unusual. Just a bunch of trees. It was until she used her mind's Ikagura ability that she noticed who it was. Okay, what are you doing here? She narrowed her eyes. A black-haired man wearing a high-collared shirt came out, on his chest was a small fan-like symbol. Come on I was just curious. It was Kagami Ichiha, and I also wanted to talk to him. Me? Abito asked, that explains everything. He said flatly. Now, now you are making me feel bad. Cry me a river then, will you cause of you I've been getting a lot of unwanted attention. Abito said, grumbled, so, please leave us. Yes, sensei. Shu Shu go away. Kashina said with a shooing motion. Yeah, what she said wait sensei. Abito looked at Kagami and then at Kashina. Inwardly he was raking his brain off, was Kagami her sensei in the original series? I don't know there wasn't any mention of it in the original series. But if you look at it, it does make sense. Only a powerful Shuringen user is able to control the Nine Tails Jinchuriki if it loses control. Was it the reason why he's her sensei? Several other questions were going through Abido's head. But he focused on the conversation in front. Well, Kashina-chan I have a little offer for that hatchling, but seeing you guys like this makes hurts me a lot. He said with fake tears. Abido rolled his eyes, what offer do you have for a five-year-old? A bag of candies. Kagami opened his mouth, before stopping, actually, why didn't I think of that he shook his head, anyway, I just thought of giving you a helping hand in your Sharingan training as you know, you don't have any people to help you with. Abido was wide-eyed. 
Actually, he did have quite a bunch of people willing to help him get the grasp over his new eyes, like Mikoto Ichiha, as she was going to teach her sister as well. But all of them paled to him. He was Kagami of the Crow. One of the most powerful Jinjutsu users in current time, also some even compare his speed to the third Reikage. That's all I didn't expect that Kagami chuckled, walking towards him, ruffling his hair, well, I wasn't going to teach any snot-nosed brats out of glory, but you are quite different Abido. And I want to see, how far you will go with the eyes that awaken to protect. Both Abido and Kashina gave him a confused look, what I'm saying is Abido is special. He is the only Ichiha I know so far that awakened those eyes without losing someone or making a sacrifice. Abido blinked, well, technically he is right. In the original, Abido awakened his eyes, after nearly seeing Kakashi die and Rin being in danger. In fact, in the original series, Abido awakened his eyes to protect as well, so he wasn't much different. But if that's considered special. Sarada awakened her eyes just from being excited to see her I am gonna get some milk dad. So do you accept it it might be hard. He said, I'm quite strict when it comes to training. Of course but Kagami cut him off, also, you might make the elders not like you that much. If you start receiving training from me, I don't have the best reputation in the clan. Oh, yeah, he completely forgot about the old fossils and their toothpick politics. But who gives a fuck? In fact, Abido would have accepted the offer just to spite those old fools. Nah, I don't care I needed someone for help anyway. Just teach me that cool crow trick. Well, you would need to have a crow contract for that but Kagami glanced over Abido's shoulder, without him knowing. But it might be possible in the future. A little black shadow quickly moved away. Abido tried to hide his smile, but damn was he excited. I'll promise to fully mature my eyes in three months. Kagami laughed, that's an admirable goal, young lad. But I don't have that much free time on my hand. So you will be done in two. He said those words as if they promised pain. After that, we will move on to Kenjutsu and Injutsu and even some of my special Jinjutsu. Kashina placed his hand over Abido's shoulder, don't worry little one. If you change your dreams of not becoming a ninja, I will understand your decision. She said, in a way, that made Abido question his own decision. Okay, what the fuck am I signing up for? But wait sensei, I thought you didn't have the time cause of your anbu duties, and Watnit, Kashina asked. I mean you even declined my request for Jinjutsu training, and I failed my Jonin exams cause of that. Kagami smiled sadly, well, for one I didn't even expect to train him either. But the last mission didn't go well, and I'm still recovering, and the hookage suggested that I train him he did quite a lot in the hospital incident. He said casually, glancing at Abido, who was a bit surprised. I was just planning to train you in Jinjutsu so you both can join together. Kagami inwardly was thinking back to what happened that led to this. A while back, how's your health, Kagami? Hiruzen said to his friend while he visited the Anbu hospital for his old friend, I had Rashi caught you off guard. Kagami sighed, sitting on the hospital bed, you know about me my eyes won't hold up for long. My vision is fading faster than I thought he said sadly. You know you could have avoided it, Hiruzen said mixed concern in his voice. You should have let the others on your team handle Rashi while you retreated. They both knew what it meant. Kagami's Anbu unit was set up for him to strike fast and deadly. He wasn't the heavy hitter in the team, but the quick one. Kagami smiled, I know it's just that cause of my decision to Rifu can go back to his family today. I don't want to sacrifice my comrades anymore. He said. I think my way of thinking of what a shinobi is might be wrong. Hiruzen was almost surprised, Tarifu Akamichi was one of the students of Taburama like him and Kagami. He was exceptional for an Akamichi, no one in the village could match him in strength, yet taking on a Jinchuriki like Rashi was too much for him. Actually what happened was, due to Ryo Hayuga losing his eyes, the stone village set up an ambush of false lead of where the new user of the stone Bayakugan was. And Kanoha fell for it honestly, Herzen was very glad that all of them made it but it seemed Kagami had to push himself beyond his limits for that. You should leave your duties in the Anbu for at least half a year, Hiruzen suggested. All of the members in your team are alive, but all of you came out with injurious. We can't lose any more good shinobis like you. Maybe settle down and have a kid or two while you are at it. 
Kagami laughed at the Saratobi's joke, yeah, make Danzo marry someone then we will see. Hiruzen also laughed at that. After a bit of talk about how things were going, Hiruzen finally spoke about what he came here for. You want me to train him? Kagami said while the Hokage nodded, want to make him the target for the elders they don't like me. Hiruzen sighed. You should know recently the Ichihas were very upset due to mismanagement of the budgets he said, it's clearly my fault that it happened, and I don't want such talented Ichiha to get brainwashed into thinking bad about the village. What? But it was the elders fault to begin with that the Ichiha suffered. It's not the villages. Kagami said with a bitter growl, I really do hate village politics. Hiruzen didn't say anything. He knew what the elders did was wrong. But it was his fault as well the other clans didn't like Ichihas that much, due to the police force. And he let it happen, but he had a lot to think about after losing his father in the war, and it slipped him. I was going to give the kid a helping hand anyway, so it might just work out. Kagami said, he is very mature for his age. And he is one of the odd Ichihas to gain his Shuringen without any trauma in fact, I think his awakening came from trying to protect. Hiruzen nodded, the kid has a blooming will of fire. Kinder it well, Kagami. The Ichiha nodded. Abido got home after his talk with Kagami. He obviously figured it out why Hiruzen recommended Kagami to train him. They want to make a patriot out of me. He internally laughed, do they really think of me as that naive? But then again I am a five-year-old. Patriotism one of the weirdest ideologies. An ideology that he couldn't wrap his head around in both of his worlds. What it basically meant was that you would be slaves to some piece of land that didn't do shit for you. He still remembered how in his previous childhood, people would write long ass textbooks on how great the country was. And had huge tradition and what not at the same time point fingers at the neighboring country, for all the problems that they themselves created. Also all about reclaiming some lost lands in previous wars and whatnot. He had no problems in giving his life for friends and family he cared for or died while protecting them. That was called brotherhood and kinship. They literally looked after you, and what did some piece of land did elect some corrupt government that made shitty rules to cut off your wage at the end of the month. But then again, in an ideal world, the government would actually care about its people, and patriotism might make sense then. There was both sides to a coin, so he might be wrong. But personally, Abido abhorred that ideology. He was a half-immigrant, and liked that he and his sister had to struggle quite a bit after their mother died. Why? Cause of shitty immigrant laws it was practically the same in all other countries. And that's why he personally didn't like it. Itachi was a cool character in the series, but he was stupid in some aspects. Cause if he was so talented, and he cared so much about his brother Sasuke. Then why not just take the kid and leave the village that stole on of your friend's eyes? Fuck the clan and the village that treats Naruto the son of a hokage like shit. I mean basically every Rouge S class cage level nin were just left alone with their own devices. And no one bothered with them. But then again Itachi was what 13 then, and a child with an impressionable mind. So he got brainwashed into patriotism. Abido shook his head, sometimes he mixed both of his lives up. Okay, let's work on more important things. He thought to himself. Now it was at night, and he got into the training grounds. He closed his eyes before opening them. Two red eyes opened, revealing the two Tomod Shuringen. Honestly, Abido didn't expect to awaken two Tomod Shuringen at the first go. I got lucky, I guess. He shrugged. He calmed himself down, breathing in a certain pattern before grasping onto a certain feeling. And soon he could see more the colors shifted a bit before turning black and white. Abido was just awed at all the details he could see right now. This wasn't his first time using his Sharingan, but this was his first time using it, along with his breathing technique. And it looked awesome. It was night, and with his breathing technique activated, he could see a bit little. But the Sharingan amplified the light and he could see in the dark much more clearly. He could even see all around him and zoom to a certain part without glancing in there. The world seemed to slow down quite a bit. But most of all, he could see another color into the mix. While using his breathing technique the world would turn black and white, and he could see the outline of living creatures in red and blue. Now he saw the same thing, but with added green particles into the mix. 
He could see the green participles everywhere threes, living creatures what the is it a bad. The beetle by instinct moved his head in that direction, and he saw the most absurd thing, the bat mixed with the shadows before disappearing from his visual senses. How the fuck does that work a beetle looked dejected, around him stood Kagami and Kashina. This was his first day of training, and sure enough, things didn't go as smoothly as he liked. Is there no other way? A beetle looked at Kagami with pleading eyes, I want to gain my third Tomo quick. Come on it's good that you can use them for 5 minutes. Kashina tried to cheer him up. Abido had used both of Shuringen as per Kagami's instructions. And he also tried to follow Kagami's basic movements and copy some minor jutsus. And that seemed to be the problem. Abido didn't have the necessary chakra to actively use his Shuringen for a longer period of time. Well, it's a good thing that you awakened with two tomos in the first place. So don't feel bad I kinda expected that, cause of your low chakra and all. Kagami said, walking near Abido who was still a bit pale from chakra loose. Why have I not used my Shuringen without my breathing technique before it's so much more draining? He thought to himself. Wait does my breathing technique also help with draining chakra at low? Huh, I need to look into that. It's just that you don't have enough chakra to sustain both eyes at once. I would usually recommend you increase your chakra reserves, but you're still young, and I'm not sure if it will be helpful or harmful. Abido sighed, yes, granny told me not to do exercises that increase my chakra. Chakra is the combination of both physical and mental energy, so if someone increased his physical energy or mental energy then by extension, they would increase their chakra reserves. Now came the problem usually increasing physical energy to increase your chakra was a taxing thing. So most shinobis use deep meditation or taking on mental tasks, along with circulating your chakra in specific ways to increase your mental energy. And Granny Mai and even Kagami was telling him not to do that. Cause it might hamper his natural mental growth later in life. Even Abido was reluctant to do that. So there was only one way, that was to increase his physical powers. Fine, then if there's no other way I will take the hard route. Abido thought as he looked at Kagami, what if I use one Shuringen at a time and rotate the uses of it? Kagami smiled, that's a bit unorthodox, but seeing your condition there won't be any other way. And I had the same plan from the very beginning. He said, rubbing his chin, but you will still need to improve your chakra reserves. So for now let's focus on Jinjutsu resistance training. Now that you have unlocked your Shuringen, your chakra should increase a bit faster naturally. You should also focus on physical training even though it doesn't increase your reserves much, you need all the chakra you can get. Well, that's the plan. I will need to focus on training physically right now. And I know just a man who can help me with it. Abido thought. Also, I need a bit of help from Kashina on those gravity seals. Those things will help me with the training as well. Kagami clapped his hands, gaining both of his students' attention. Okay, for Jinjutsu resistance training, you need to know a few things at first. For Kashina, as you are a Jinchuriki, you are easily prone to Jinjutsu. So I will cast my Jinjutsu on you, and you will need to break free out of it. All the while you will try to get out of the small forest he paused before continuing. They were in a small forest inside Kanoha, it wasn't some scary forest like the forest of death or anything, and it was pretty small. You would need to walk around 15 minutes to exit the forest. But Kagami would be using his Jinjutsu to confuse both Abido and Kashina, so they can't escape that easily. And for Abido you will use one of your Shuringen to see Kashina's chakra, and determine if she's in a Jinjutsu or not. And if by chance she can't break free you will use your chakra to break her out of it. Meanwhile, you will also be getting attacked by my Jinjutsu so you will have more work. Abido groaned, how's that fair? Kagami gave him a flat look, we have broken eyes that of unparalleled Jinjutsu capabilities you tell me if that's fair. Abido opened his mouth, but closed it. Good point. He looked to his side, and saw Kashina dejected, she really hated Jinjutsu doesn't she? She's having the same problems as Naruto. But something came to his mind, and Kashina was his friend and helped him quite a lot, so he wanted to share something. Um sensei I have a question. Both Kagami and Kashina looked at him. I mean, Kagami-sensei, sometimes I forget both of you are my senses. Kashina smiled a bit. Anyway, what was your question Abido? 
Tagami asked. He had already summoned a bunch of his crows, and already sent them away inside the forest to hide. Well, I have read a few books about Jinchuriki from the Ichiha library. Abito said, making Kashina flinch and even Kagami was annoyed. It didn't make Kashina feel safe that other clans were keeping an eye on him. But Abito continued, and something doesn't make sense. Kagami raised an eyebrow, and that is, why are Jinchurkas more prone to Jinjutsu? Abito asked, it doesn't make sense does it? Kagami shook his head, because they have two chakras inside of them, making it easier for Jinjutsu experts to tweak their chakra without them knowing. Yeah, that doesn't make sense at all. Abito said, let's say when I'm with Kashina and I know she's in a Jinjutsu, so I can break her free. So in a Jinchuriki, there should be a Biju inside the human, then shouldn't the Biju help the human break out of Jinjutsu, if the Biju sees that something is wrong with the human's chakra. Kagami was going to refuse the claim, but something caught his mind. Kashina sighed, Abito it doesn't work that way no, wait Kashina. I think Abito might be on to something Kagami blurred out, thinking about his fight with Rashi. He couldn't put the man in any kind of Jinjutsu. Or what if he did put Rashi in a Jinjutsu, but the Biju inside of him broke him out of it? Was it the reason? There isn't much information on the Jinchuriki cause of it being new and all. So they needed to work with theories, but what Abito said did make sense. Even though, but what you are saying only applies to Jinchurikas that have full control of their Biju. Or even partial control of them. Abito smiled, it seemed that Kagami got what he meant. Originally I only saw Canon Killer B break out of Jinjutsu from Sasuke, and people said that it was due to him being a perfect Jinchuriki. On Wa Sensei, are you sure? Kashina asked, but being a perfect Jinchuriki is no easy feat. Even Mido Sama wasn't one. Kagami was in his own head. So Abito replied, and what if the Biju that's inside you it's the Nine Tails right? It's supposed to be the most powerful of the tailed beasts, so doesn't it stand to assume that it would have intelligence and reasoning? I mean even there are lots of giant animals that does have intelligence like the three great summons of the Sanin for example. You sure do speculate a lot, but Abido might be right. Even my crows have intelligence, so it shouldn't be impossible for the nine tails fox having intelligence. Kagami said, but you should speak to Mido-sama first she might know better about it. Kagami sensei is right, but if you do want to train in tailed beast chakra, he might be the only one who can help you not lose control, Abido said. But still you would need to become good at noticing if you are in a Jinjutsu before that. Yuzumaki's in general were known for being able to break out of Jinjutsu cause of their mind eyes Kagura ability. They were considered the natural enemies to Ichiha's Jinjutsu. And in the Warring States period, they were considered much more threat than Senju cause of their crafty ways with Fuinjutsu. But Kashina being a Jinchuriki wasn't able to do that cause of her being a Jinchuriki, still she could detect if others were in a Jinjutsu. So she needed to train on freeing herself on Jinjutsu as she wanted to be a Jonin. Kashina blinked, yeah I will think about it. Abido panted while he started walking forward again. Why did I sign up for this shit he thought to himself. As he walked forward, one could see a rope was tied to his wrist, while the other end of it was tied to Kashina's wrist. With Kagami's Jinjutsu training they had to keep each other close or else they would get lost in this accursed force. Sickness, fever, hallucination, getting stabbed by random traps, losing balance falling for eternity, all of these became quite common for them. All of it wasn't real, all it was Jinjutsu both shinobi and training would tell themselves, yet the realism of those illusions was unreal. Kagami's Jinjutsu could manipulate their five cents with great ease. They didn't know how much time they were in the forest. But it felt like days had passed, even Abido was second guessing his training with Kagami. But at high noon both the Ichiha and Yuzumaki exited the forest. Wait are we out? Abido asked one of his Shuringans still active. The Ichiha didn't look good at all. His clothes, Kai. Kashina said flaring her chakra, before blinking. Wait we actually out. I it's not an illusion. She seemed fanatic. She looked even worse with messy red hair and bags under her eyes. Both of the Shinobis flinched when they heard clapping noises from a certain direction, and Abido didn't wait before throwing a kunai at it. Kagami of course quickly deflected the kunai before it came toward him. Wow. You guys look like you've been through war. Kagami chuckled, gaining both of his students' glares. 
So he coughed, anyway, you did good for the first day, and you only took 4 hours. Wait only 4 hours passed. Kashina asked, blinking as if she heard wrong. But I saw several nights pass in Jutsu. She just sighed. Of course, it's those damn Jinjutsu even Abido was surprised, he wasn't using his breathing technique while training, but still, even with his Shuringen, at least 12 hours should have passed. It seemed that you can also manipulate our sense of time, he quietly muttered. What did I sign up for? Kagami just smiled. Okay guys, the training ends for today. It's already 12 midday so yeah, didn't Abido need to go somewhere? Abido blinked before remembering Ichiraka Raymond. Oh, shit. I need to go I'm already running late. And with that, he left running towards his destination. It's a good thing he already told Tucci beforehand. But Abido paused, why was he running, making a half seal with one of his hands he used the body flicker to move fast. And with one of his Shuringen active, it was quite easy to keep up with the speed. And he could even pour speed into it now. It's just that while in the forest using the body flicker was a very good way to get lost inside of it. Kagami had made it so that it would work against the user. That crafty bastard. Uh, I also need a bowl of ramen. It's been such a long ass day. She grumbled, while Kagami just silently chuckled. Kagami was quite pleased with his new students. Keeping up with advanced Anbu Jinjutsu training many people quitted on the first day. And yet both of them didn't complain much. Kashina for being a Jinchuriki. And Abido for being an Ichiha most Ichihas, tend to rely on their eyes way too much after awakening their bloodline ability. And Kagami didn't want Abido to do that, but it seemed that Abido exceeded his expectations. Not only was he using his Shuringen sparingly, to save Chakra he was also able to get out of any Jinjutsu in a small amount of time. Even without using his Shuringen. Heck, sometimes he saw the boy stabbing himself to get out of Jinjutsu that were way above his level to break out of with natural means before healing himself. What Kagami didn't know was because of Abido's sense of dual reality on how the world looked and I'm like to him, he was easily able to tell when he was in Jinjutsu. An odd perk that would come very handy later on in his life. Abido was feeling mentally drained right now, yet he was making his way toward work. He could take a break, but he wanted to do something without praying eyes. He dropped down from one of the roofs onto the Kanoha busy streets, as he started to breathe in a familiar pattern. This time he didn't grasp onto the feeling as he was trying to separate the recovery aspect from his breathing technique without having 360 vision. And sure enough, it worked he could feel his exhaustion go away. He felt his chakra recover at a significant rate, all of it was possible, even without the sensory effect of his technique. He actually discovered it accidentally during the hospital massacre. Wait if that's the case then doesn't that mean if someone does copy my pattern of breathing, he would only get the added benefit of recovering chakra. He thought, fuck. I think I won't need to hide my technique anymore if it's true. There were already similar techniques to boost chakra recovery, and Abido's technique had a drawback. That was he needed to calm himself down and be very good at it, if he wants to use it in battle. The only reason why he could finally separate the recovery aspect of his technique from his sensory breathing, was because of his proficiency in it. Other people might just feel a slight increase in chakra recovery or even nothing at all. They might just find it weird. Sure other than his own clan, Abido was sure no one could copy him. So he had to be careful. But it's still a theory. Abido thought, I need to be sure that no one can copy the 360 sensory aspects of my technique in some ways. My technique is better than the Byakugan. Sure I can't use it in battle, but even the most powerful Byakugan user was made into a pencil holder at the Fort Shinobi War, so that's that. It would be stupid to give my technique away, and mainly to Kagami it's unfortunate, but I don't trust him. Several other thoughts were in his head, but he was already at the shop. So he quickly got in. And Tucci was in trouble. When the owner of Ichiraku was finding it hard to manage all the customers he finally found Abido. He sighed in relief seeing the boy. Abido I need some help there's too many of them. He said pointing at the line of customers it was near lunch hours, and people really liked it here. Abido was glad that Tucci didn't scold him for being late. He loved working here. And he was also getting lessons from the man himself on how to cook ramen he wouldn't give away for anything. 
Actually, Kagami wanted to extend the training to practice Kenjutsu as well. But Abido needed time to work on Fuinjutsu, and Kenjutsu can be learned later on in life, but Fuinjutsu is highly recommended to learn at young age. And also Abido would find out Mike Dai to teach him to Jutsu after work. So adding Kenjutsu into the mix would only overwork him. And of course, he was still young so he could learn Kenjutsu later as well, and with eyes that can copy moves, it shouldn't be that though. As Abido started working soon Kashina came after freshening up a bit. And of course, Tuchi was surprised to see her and gave her a free bowl. Any words that Kashina had on revealing who she was, had to wait after the free bowl of Maizo Raymond. Abido internally chuckled, what did Minato propose her with? A year's worth of free ramen weight, that might actually work. As customers seemed to come less and less, Tucci and Abido both could get some breather. It was really hard working with all the customers, but it was fun at the same time. Honestly, Abido felt bad for coming late today, so he promised himself that he would finish up training earlier. Kagami might seem lazy, but he was a great teacher. He didn't know about Kashina, but he gained a lot on the first day training under him. He could easily decipher the Jinjutsu with his Shuringen. Another weird thing he also learned was that unless it was a high-quality Jinjutsu, it didn't have good control, and wouldn't be very effective against Abido. Cause if he was caught in that type of Jinjutsu he would see dual-type realities. He would see an I'm world graphics mix with the real world. When it first happened he was honestly horrified. Honestly, that shit was scary. But at the same time, it was easy to make out that he was in a Jinjutsu and easily break out of it. At first, he was worried about why this was happening, cause after coming to this world, this was the first time he saw this it was weird, nostalgic, and horrifying at the same time. He was put under Jinjutsu before, on the day of the Ichiha Age of Coming exam. That time it didn't happen. What was different but Abido found the answer. It was his Shuringen. He didn't have that before. And for that, he experimented on himself by getting caught in Jinjutsu without one of his Shuringen active. Sure enough, he didn't have the dual reality effect. And with both Shuringen active, the effects would be much more apparent. He was sure that other Ichihas didn't see the same thing with their Shuringen. But at the same time, they weren't sent here through a game from another world. Maybe he accepted both realities for what they were maybe cause of that he was seeing it this way. His chain of thoughts was broken when Kashina called him. Abido, I need to ask you something. Abido looked at her, he was done with the dishes, and other than her there was no customer. Yeah. I thought of what you said about Kashina said, and Abido nodded, so you don't actually think it has a sentient, do you? Abido hummed, think about this way he said, keeping his voice down, if that fox didn't have nine tails, people would confuse him with a large summoning beast and all summoning beasts have intelligence. So isn't it just odd that no one thought that the tailed beasts that have the power to take down an entire nation wouldn't have intelligence? Kashina bit her lips she seemed to be worried. What happened? Abido asked while raising an eyebrow. It's just that if you are true doesn't that mean I trapped a full sentient best inside of me, I would hate that if I were in his shoes. Kashina said. Abido nodded, you are right on that part. No one likes being imprisoned yeah, it might have close friends or even family that he can't meet because of being trapped, Kashina said with worry. Abido almost wanted to deny that. But then again, this wasn't the original Naruto. So the tailed beasts might not have the same origin. Actually, something was on his mind according to the game screen, if there was no Aotsutsuki. Then doesn't that mean no Kagai also? If that's the case then no Hagoromo, no Hamur. Then how did Chakra come to this world? Maybe natural mutation or evolution or something like that. But that wasn't important. All that would change is the main villain would be Madar. And if Black Satsu exists then it might be Madara's will or something like that. Um Mabido how should I talk to it? Kushina asked, I don't want to talk to Mido-san right away. I want to see and talk to it first Abido blinked, smart girl. Abido thought, honestly after what Mido did to her if I was in her shoes, I would have trust issues by now. Cause of the whole tailed beast stingy she can't even go back home. She was treated as royalty back in Yuzashiagakur village. Even though the village is still standing, it won't be for long. So it's just sad. Abido thought, maybe I can do something about it. 
Sure, go ahead. I will help in any way I can, but I would recommend not to tweak anything about the seal. The fox might even try to control you to free him from the seal. So you should be careful. Abido said. Thinking again he added, also, you should be prepared it might be really angry to meet its jailer, and try not to get scared by it. I don't anything about what a perfect Jinchuriki is, but if my gut is right, then befriending the fox will help you a ton in controlling becoming a perfect Jinchuriki. Kashina nodded. So you are here a voice said, making both of them look at the blonde newcomer. And with a long sigh, he said, Kashina please don't tell me forgot about today. It was the famous but not yet known yellow flash of Kanoha. Abido blinked and was quite excited, Minato was one of his favorite characters. Honestly, Minato and Itachi were the cooler versions of Naruto and Sasuke. Facts as I tell you. But at the same time, Abido was feeling a bit mischievous today. So, and who might you be? Kashina's brother Kashina blinked, and Minato almost choked at that. Before looking at Abido. Oh well, my name is Minato Namikis. He said, before chuckling, and for you information no I am her boyfriend. Don't bro zone me, lil bro. Abido fake gasped, looking at the redhead. Kashina how could we after going through so much I thought we had a thing. Kashina just rolled her eyes Minato just chucked, seeing a 5 year old wooing her girl. Kashina talks a lot about her so called disciple, and he must be a handful for an Ichiha. Oh, you have no idea. But the kid's good, and it's a good thing he's not like Fugu face, I even get free Raymond sometimes she said, anyway, what was that about? What did I forget? Minato's sweat dropped, it was our date he sighed when Kashina became wide eyed. And you completely forgot honestly, I wouldn't hear the end of it if I did that same thing. You know I had to wait 2 hours at the restaurant. And I found you here I did say we should go to Ichiraka Raymin, since you like the place so much, and now that you don't need to hide. He said the last part in a whisper. Kashina was just embarrassed. She didn't say anything. Abido chuckled seeing the couple, not even 15, and they already dating each other I mean talk about childhood sweetheart. Anyway, welcome customer, Abido said. Take a seat what would you like to order? Oh give just give me the normal chicken ramen, Minato said as he took the seat next to Kashina, who was whispering sorry to him. One chicken ramen for Minato Yuzumaki. Abido shouted for Tuchi to hear. Minato frowned, um Minato Namikis actually. Yes, just as I said. Minato Yuzumaki Abido cleared, with a teasing smile. Minato just sighed. Do you wanna know why? Abido asked wiggling his eyebrow, and the blonde was going to say no. But Abido continued. Cause I already know who wears the pants in the relation. And it's not you blondie Abido grinned. Good luck marrying into the Yuzumaki Minato just helplessly sighed. While Kashina laughed. Oh, isn't he just annoying. I know but you just have to deal with it. Another voice said. And it was Kagami. He's my student after all. One Maizo Raymond please. One Maizo Raymond for peeping crow sensei. Abido said. See Kagami grinned as if he was a proud father. He even takes after me. Kashina was barely holding onto the chair, while Minato was just surprised to see Kagami. Kagami-san, how have you been? The blonde asked. Quite good right now Kagami said. I hope you are training hard, it's not easy to get into my Anbu team. And just cause you are Jiraiya's favorite student it won't help. Minato hastily nodded, yes sir. I wouldn't dare to slack off. Kagami lazily nodded, but you will have to wait a year before joining my team. I am taking a year off so that's that. Minato seemed a bit down. But think of it as a good time to grow. I have heard rumors that someone is trying to make a new technique. Minato nervously chuckled. Abido blinked. Okay, he didn't expect Minato to act that way. The boy was almost nervous around Kagami. What was going on Kashina in between her laughs leaned in towards Abido, Minato right here is a big fan of Kagami sensei. The blonde almost worships the guy, but don't say I told you so. Hey. Minato retorted, now looking red. Kagami was the most powerful Ichiha. If you count out the half-dead Midar. But he also had the title of the fastest man alive in Kanoha. And how ironic was it that Minato looked up to him. Honestly working here was the best decision I've made. Abido just laughed. It's been a whole month since Abido started training with Kagami. 
Now he was taking his time off, laying in the hospital bed. After what happened he was fortunate and unfortunate at the same time. And even though it was kind of an accident Abido did awaken three tomos in his right eye. It was a solo survival training in the forest of death. And things got a bit rough, a chakra beast that looked like a centipede-like tail with a scorpion body attacked him. Honestly, it looked like a dead monster of Frankenstein, and only the centipede part of it was alive, when he saw it through his sensory technique. And things escalated quickly and he got attacked by poisoned acid. Unfortunately, it got into his right eye when he had the Shuringen active. Abido was shit scared at the time, thinking he would lose one of his eyes, and frantically use his healing ninjutsu on himself. He wouldn't have survived, cause that centipede with scorpion thingy was no ordinary beast, it was a summoning animal that was out for revenge. Abido only survived the encounter by unleashing the shit ton of sealed explosions he had. And of course, it destroyed a huge chunk of the forest, and Kashina and Kagami came not too late. By then he had already healed himself and by the sheer rush of adrenaline, he awaked. It was funny both the clan elders and Hokage agreed on the same thing. Also a bit disturbing that he got so much attention for the incident in the first place. Getting into the hospital cause you are weak shouldn't be a reason to gain attention. The clan elders were taking a more mild approach to things right now. And Abido was used as a bridge to connect both parties. Anyhow that wasn't important what was important was what Abido was seeing right now. Strangely enough, Abido was seeing having dreams of bats after the incident. He already had a few suspicions about what it was. Now in his dream, he was standing in front of a figure that looked like a shadowy version of Batman. The surrounding was fogged at the figure just looking at him with white pupil-less eyes. But strangely enough, Abido felt no hostility from it. Even more strange it was kinda similar to a shadowy version of Batman, without the logo on the chest. So are you going to say something? Abido asked with his usual carefree voice. I do know I am in a Jinjutsu and I can break free anytime I want, but that's not important is it? The figure just stared at him. You use sound you use sound as a medium to cast the Jinjutsu Abido chuckled. I was kinda worried about it first having weird dreams I even thought it was PTSD. But it turned out to be Jinjutsu all along. It was quite difficult to understand the difference between a dream or Jinjutsu. But this is a Jinjutsu though I was also worried as to how you pulled me in a Jinjutsu in, while multiple Ichu has visited me, but using sound as a medium. I don't wanna admit it but it's a cool concept. The figure spoke, its voice was deep, mixed with echoes of others, kinda like chalk dragging through a blackboard. It wasn't pleasant at all. And this was also the first time when Abido was hearing its voice. Ha, huh, so you can speak. Abido muse, sitting on the ground, anyhow, I do want to know why you are following me, bad. While lazily sitting he opened only his right eye, the three tome Shuringen lazily spinning at the figure. Also, thank you for saving me back then. Back when the centipede Thinji attacked him, he didn't have any opening to fight back or escape. Until suddenly he saw a foreign chakra in that creature as if someone put him in a Jinjutsu. Abido capitalized on that opportunity to attack the centipede zombie back then. Before it burst into a flock of bats, and only a single bat remained in front of Abido. Abido's lips curled up, ho oh, and look at that, isn't that the lil battacy that I saved in the Hokage Mountain How's life been treating you, I got any dead robins that I should be worried about. He chuckled at the last part, which the bat might have ignored out of ignorance or something else. It is an honor to be recognized by you. Abido saw that the bat spoke, this time, its voice was much more refined. Let us formally introduce ourselves, we are bats from Ryuchi Cave. I here speak for myself and my people. And it's an honor to finally met my savior. And what I did was just return the favor. That brought much more questions than he had anticipated. But Abido held on to them for now. Yeah about that I was the one who set up the traps in the first place, it doesn't change your deeds. The small bat said, honestly, other than its eyes, Abido couldn't see anything of it, its body looked like it was made out of pure darkness. And even though I am grateful I do apologize for making contact with you sooner rather than, rather than eavesdropping on me, I doubt you had any negative intentions for your savior. Abido said. But, I am curious as to why you didn't approach me sooner. I know we the bats wanted to test you before approaching you. 
The bat explained, so we wanted to see if you were ready for not. And after fully mastering one of your eyes, we thought it was time. Abito's lips curled up a bit. I didn't know I would be approached by a summoning beast. I thought I had to go through some serious trail before getting a contract. Even though the concept of summoning was always in Naruto. It was never explained, and Abido had done some research on it in his spare time in the Ichiha library. Usually summoned contacts are passed down, like for example the hawk contract in the Ichiha. Same thing from the monkey contact in the Saratobi clan. But if foreign users want to get their contact, they usually have to go through a trial before they can sign it. Honestly, Abido felt quite lucky that he was approached by the bats this early in his shinobi life. He could easily get to know them well and incorporate them into his fighting style. We did test you, Abido-sama. The bat said, making Abido internally surprised even though he didn't show it. But almost all the time, you passed it beyond our expectation. The bat didn't explain any further. But Abido could guess that the dreamlike Jinjutsu might be one of its tests. So he didn't ask much. Okay, Abido said, so you want to break the Jinjutsu so that we can make the summoning contact or something. We don't need anything of that a verbal contact would be enough for you to fully utilize the bats of the Ryuchi cave. Abido lazily looked at the bat through his Shuringen, before asking. Can I know why? The bat looked at Abido, it is information that you should know of, but it might be a bit long. Abido nodded. So the bat started. Long ago, before the Warring States period. The bats were a symbol of fear, a symbol of shadows. We bats lived in a place called Ryuchi Cave. A cave that was always attuned with natural energy, having multiple sages in each generation. Back then we were known much throughout the summoning realms. But it also brought praying eyes to our nest. The snakes betrayed our ancestors taking our homes for themselves, killing every bat that they could find. Some of the bats had fled from the cave and sought refuge elsewhere. Even though we call ourselves the bats of the Ryuchi cave, we are nothing but name now. When no one came to help. We found our safe place near the home of the Nine Tails Fox. Unlike other creatures, he didn't fear us. He let us be, even protected us sometimes. But when the fox was captured and imprisoned we also lost our second home. For decades we were always near the fox. So we stayed that way, in the shadows, near the fox's container, finding a new home in the shadows of Kanoha as you know it. The bat finished. As you see we do not have a home where we could be summoned from. Abido had seen summoning contacts before from the Ichiha library. It was basically a super advanced version of the sealing formula or a bastardized version of the teleportation formula. Taburama did make his Horatian no jutsu from it. And summoning contacts didn't have any loyalty seal on them or anything. It was always about trust. Summoned animals trusted their summoner, and the summoner trusted their summons. They both wanted something in return from each other corporation, but that was it. So a verbal contact was no different from a written one. But it also showed trust. And it also stressed how much the bats were willing to give to Abido. Say, bat do you have a name? Abido asked. I do not I am just a part of the flock. Only sage of our kind had names as far as we know, but if Abido Sama does wish to name me, I will not protest. We will think of something Abido hummed, and do you want something in return? The bat looked at Abido, its face was unreadable, but it looked confused. We already will have protection from the snakes if we stay with Abido Sama. Even though we are ashamed to admit it, but you are the first bat summoner after our home was taken away. We did not take anyone as our own summons, so we do not know how things go. So, forgive us for our ignorance. So just by making a contact with me you will gain protection. There are better candidates I am sure of that can provide you with that. Abido said. We do not see any young ones with as much affinity as you have, and your master Chihakagami, I believe, has already a contract with the noble crows, they are not very eager to share their summoner. And you are also very close to Jailer of the Nine Tails Fox, so we did not see any better candidates. Abido honestly thought that the bats chose him for accidentally saving him back then. But it seemed it had more to it. Even though Abido didn't know to what extent the bats were capable of, but if their previous generation had sages, they would be much more useful in his future goals. But at the same time, he wanted to build a relationship with trust. I do have to say I am surprised. 
And you should know about something the snakes that have taken your Ryuchi cave, have a summoner living among the shinobis of Kanoha. We do know about the disciple of the white snake. The bat said, its voice even, but Abido could feel bitterness from it. But that is more reason for us to sign a contract with you you are quite liked by your kind. They care for you, they praise you, and they hold you in high regard. The disciple of the white snake wouldn't be able to do anything even if he knows that we are your summons. And the snakes don't hunt us anymore sadly we have been forgotten in the pages of history, other than the old white snake, I am sure no one knows of us. We have been living in secrecy for quite a while now, and we are very good at it. Abido didn't say anything, he thought about everything before speaking. If you become my summon, I do not know if you will gain fame. But I do know in my journey you might have to lose your kin in my battles. Are you willing to go to such lengths, even knowing I can offer you nothing but a small shelter for now? The bat looked at Abido. Before other bats started joining him, before making a figure. We the bats of Ryuchi Cave, accept your terms Oibto Sama. And make a promise to serve you with all we have till we die. As the bat said the words the world around them started to shatter like glass. We do not know what this will bring to the bats of Ryuchi cave, it might give us honor, or give us extension, but we are ready for it. For we have chosen you, Ichiha Bido as our master. That day both parties did not, but their contact would soon bring great changes to the shinobi world. The world would know the fear of the bats for this day, and that the ghost of Ichiha was born. Abido walked down the streets of Kanoha. He walked past Ichiha Shinobis, even other well-known censor Shinobis that he knew of, but no one acted differently. No one noticed the bats that were on him. I really am amazed at the bats' hiding abilities. Abido thought. But then again even I can't even sense them with my sensory abilities if they hit well enough. As he walked down the streets he started thinking of what happened with the bats. The bats obviously wanted to get back to their original home, yet they never requested it. But Abido knew if he wanted to be a sage, or learn any form of Sinjutsu he needed to get there. So he would look into it when he had the strength to back it up. Abido didn't know what to do Kashina and Kagami were out of the village. Even the Raymond shop was closed. So he had the full day off for now. Apparently, Kashina and Kagami had gone to the Yuzashiagakur village for diplomatic reasons. But Abido knew Kashina was felling homesick, so that might be the reason why she went there. The village hidden in the whirlpools was a very wonderful place. But after the second war, it took quite a bit of damage. And many of the Yuzumakis had fled from their homes. Those that remained didn't even make a thousand. The population was very small if you compared it to the Ichiha clan, which had more than 2,000 living in Kanoha. Honestly, it would have been better for the Yuzumakis to abandon their village and join Kanoha. But then again there were around 10 cage level shinobi living in that small village. And they were powerful enough to hold off villages like Karigakur themselves. And in all honestly, if a village survives mostly depends on the number of cage level shinobis. Kanoha had around 15, so the Yuzumakis had good numbers on their side. And along with their famous sealing jutsus, they were on par with the five great nations. Abido knew that the Yuzumaki village would fall when all the four villages would join hands and attack them. It happened in the original timeline, and Kanoha was too late to send help. But Abido wanted to change that. Honestly, Abido could have tagged along with Kashina and Kagami if he wanted. He was a genin in all but ranks. He even didn't need to give out reasons as to why he's skipping academy classes anymore. The teachers just send him the dates of examinations to come by and say hello. Being famous is kin to good Abido thought, Hey, Nightwing how many bats are currently on me right now? Abido whispered. Did he name the bat, who he saved in the mountain previously, Nightwing? Yes. Why? Cause he felt like it. Currently there are around 80 bats in your shadow. The bat spoke using sound, it was kin to like telepathy in a way, but other sound-based ninjutsu experts could pick it up. The dozen of bats that aren't here with us have gone with the fox's jailer. Call her Kashina, Nightwing. Abido said softly, she has a name you know. Forgive me, Abido-sama. Didn't I say to drop the honorifics? I apologize again. Honestly, I should have named him Alfred rather than Nightwing. But I am sure he will grow into it. Abido thought. The bats were hiding like the insects of the Aburum clan. But they didn't live in your body but inside your clothes or even your shadows. 
After making the verbal contract with the bats, Nightwing gave him a sealing formula that was yin based. And after getting the seal in place, the bats could hide in his clothes and shadows. Of course, Abido had to feed them from time to time, but he had plenty of hunts in his sealing scrolls that he could just give them. Also, the sealing formula was kinda advanced for Abido. He could have asked one of the bats that were a sealing expert to explain it to him. But he would rather not, he wanted to decipher it himself. The formula also worked one way, he could summon the bats if they were far from him, even though the numbers weren't that much. Some of the bats went along with Kashina the bats also had a say in the contract, and they would never leave the fox. Honestly, it was kinda good in a way. As she was attacked or in a life-threatening situation, the bats that were with her could just summon themselves to Abido. And he could then do something. Though he did find it a bit creepy that bats were keeping an eye on Kashina and nobody knew about it. They were pretty good at hiding. Abido had nowhere to go, so he decided to meet with Might Die. It had been two weeks since he had started training with him, and man was it tough. Sadly now that he was injured he had to rest for a couple of days. His chain thoughts were broken when he saw a distant cloud of dust making its way towards Abido. Yosh, Abido. My youthful student, how have you been recovering? My die came still in his standing jogging position. Seriously the man was a battery of infinite energy Abido internally shook his head. I am doing fine, Dai Sensei. Abido said, I didn't get that injured, I think I can join back in training on Sunday. Now that Kagami and Kashina were out, he could only focus on Tajutsu training. The man gave a youthful thumbs up. Yashikai hasn't been pushing hard enough since you were away. Get well soon, my youthful student. For your well-being, I will run 20 laps around the village. And with that, the man was out, like a storm. Honestly, it wasn't that hard to convince Might Die to be his Tajutsu teacher. And Abido also made some custom gravity weights for him. The ones that they sell on the shop weren't challenging him that much. Or so he said. Abido shook his head as he started going towards the abandoned training grounds. He was trying to make pure flame exploding seals that would complement his wind jutsu, and he didn't want to set the forest on fire, so the abandoned training grounds were a good place to train at. Mainly, the abandoned training grounds were once a part of the Senju compound. But because of the small numbers, they gave many lands away, as many didn't want to pursue the shinobi route anymore. But then Abido heard a small commotion, and there were many people gathering. Abido chose the easier option and jumped on top of a rooftop, and to get a clear view he activated his left Shuringen. He also needed to evolve his left eye to full maturity. Of course, he still wasn't fully able to use both Shuringen due to his small chakra reserves. He was getting better. Wait isn't that Kakashi Abido zoomed in through his Shuringen, and he saw the white haired boy, using an earth jutsu powerful enough to make waves. But Abido was more interested in something else. Fuck what's up with his chakra pool. He already has four times my current chakra house that fair. Abido mumbled. Really prodigies were scary sometimes. But then again, why do I complain he shrugged before getting down from the roof and going his own way. Kakashi even for a kid was strong. He was the youngest genin after all. But Abido was sure in Jinjutsu, speed and even petty tricks. Abido was ahead of the scarecrow. Speaking of Scarecrow what was that other Jinjutsu that you wanted me to look into, Abido asked the Bat Nightwing. Abido-sama there is a Jutsu that can be very useful it is a Jutsu that casts fear into the hearts of enemies. And it doesn't use sound as a medium but scent. The Bat said, we Bats can produce a special fog that can put someone in a lengthy Jinjutsu that can be broken easily. It sounds like a poison based hallucination, but I could be wrong. Nightwing you have to teach me that that is Abido Sama, you cannot use that technique only us bats can. And not even all the bats are able to use it. Abido blinked, but then again it was something that the bats naturally produced from within them. Okay, then how can I use it? If you are able to learn to project your Shuringen onto us, you will be able to use it in a way. The bat explained, and there would be even more benefits if you are able to succeed in doing that. Oh, then. Teach me the Shuringen projection thingy a abido sama I apologize, but you might have to learn it yourself or ask your sensei Kagami of the crows to teach you that. We didn't have any Shuringen summoners before. 
Abido side so for now to jutsu it is. And Nightwing yes, Abido sama, stop using honorifics. I apologize, again. My guy was confused at first, he was running down the streets of Kanoha following his father. Then he saw one of his friends who actually respected his father, and was known for being a prodigy walking down the streets of Kanoha mumbling to himself. My guy just wanted to say hi. He was always jealous of other clan kids getting their special powers or talented prodigies like Abido and Kakashi. But his demeanor changed when Abido said he also had talent. It was in the first week when Abido wanted to join their training. Both father and son were confused at the statement. But Abido explained that both Might Guy and Dai had the talent for hard work and discipline. He then added, and in most cases, shortcuts can give you so much before you are outtaken by the one who puts more hard work than you. He didn't know what his father was thinking back then. But Guy focused on Abido's eyes. Sure he always acted optimistic and positive, yet he wasn't stupid. He saw many eyes of mockery when they looked at him, and his father cladless and talentless shinobis they said. Yet Guy only found pure respect in the boy's eyes for both him and his father. As if he expected them to reach great limits. So when a few minutes ago, he saw Bido walking down the streets of Kanoha, he wanted to say hi. Yet, he was surprised to find Abido getting sucked into a twist in reality, before vanishing. What just happened? Yo a voice said from behind him, making the boy jump, taking out his nunchucks. And it was Abido. How did he get here? He was confused and Abido chuckled at that. Sorry, guy I just wanted to test my new Jinjutsu on you. How are you anyway? I met Dai Sensei a few minutes ago. Dai blinked, but then he noticed, he had foreign chakra in his system. So he flared his chakra breaking out of the Jinjutsu. The surrounding didn't change anyhow when did Abido put him in a Jinjutsu. He didn't look into his eyes, or touch him. It was a mystery, but then again Abido was always shrouded in mystery. While he and his father had no choice but hard work to get stronger, Abido had other options, yet he didn't slack off in training. Sure the five-year-old Achiha couldn't keep up with him, yet he gave it his all. That kind of determination can only be explained with mystery. Abido chuckled again, yeah, many questions right well, it's a shinobi secret. Abido smiled, and jumped down from the wall that he was sitting on. Come on, walk with me I have a few outlandish ideas I hope you are willing to listen. And made a quick 180, with crossed arms over his head. Hey, I am not going to take any part of that fine Kakashi or someone else, okay? No eternal rival or that guy grinned, giving a thumbs up. He's also my eternal rival. I have two now, that's why I am training five times more. A beat of sweat dropped at him. The math doesn't add up, but you know I won't ask. Just don't go shouting that throughout the village. He shuddered, grabbing his shoulders. I don't like fangirls, but it's better than getting fanboys. Guy looked at him questionably. What did it mean? Mystery. Was it why Kakashi always seemed annoyed when he called him that? Are you coming? Guy's thoughts were broken when Abido called him, and he quickly jogged towards him. What did you want to share? Guy was a bit interested whenever Abido wanted to share one of his outlandish ideas. A week ago, he gave Dai an idea about walking in air, using your feet to kick the air to walk on it. It seemed outlandish, but it made his father's passion burn in flames. And now he was training his legs with those inhuman weights that Abido created. So he wanted to know what other ideas Abido had. I have been thinking about your chakra control problem honestly, only Tsune so he could use ninjutsu later on in his life, but Abido wanted to help him. Kai felt very indeed already with all the favors the Ichiha kid did. So he was going to refuse the help. Abido already helped his father with the skywalking thingy, what was it called again? Gepo ya Gepo. And he didn't want those types of jutsus that could later down the line change many things. Abido, I really do appreciate your ideas, but it's just that you are also a very hard-working person. Even though some might call your ideas outlandish, but if they work, they could be akin to clan secret techniques and Abido stopped himself by giving a light slap on the shoulders. Do you really think I care that much about village politics and whatnot? I see you as a friend, and I want to help you that's it he said rolling his eyes. Anyway, where was I? Oh about your problems with ninjutsu I don't have any solutions to it right now. 
but I do have something that might work for you. It's a bit of stretch, and it's not that original. But I think you can increase your speed like the body flicker. If you kick the ground a dozen of times in a second. Guy seemed to be confused, but then he tried to do it. The world only spun, before he fell face first into the ground. And Guy heard a beetle laughing. Remove your weight screen boy, it won't be that easy. If it was I would be able to do it by now. A beetle said. Guy had more training than a beetle. He was training ever since he was four. Now he was six, so that's two years. And a beetle was still a year younger than him, so he was physically stronger than him as well. We should also find some clear space not to get into an accident. My guy did as suggested. Removing the weights as he suggested, they were near the abandoned Senju training grounds, and both of them made their way to one of them to practice the technique. Okay, are you ready? Abido asked. Guy nodded. The technique goes as this if you kick off the ground 10 times in a blink of an eye, you can appear towards your enemy in a blink of an eye. Abido explained, like poetry. But 10 steps in a short time would be a bit of stretch, try doing as many as you can. Guy nodded again, breathing in the fresh air. He steadied his legs, activating his leg muscles before doing as Abido instructed. The world around him blurred for a second, before he tripped on the ground, and started rolling forward. Guy blinked, that worked. That worked. And it's your first try. Abido said with awe, one of his shrink inactive. How many times did you kick the ground? Abido asked just to clarify of course he saw it through his Sharingan. Around 6 by 7 I was already moving. Guy explained. Abido nodded as he started to walk towards him, deactivating his Dejutsu. Guy wanted to stand up, but his leg muscles cried out in pain. And he winced, only using one time overwork your legs, but the speed it gives is similar to the body flicker. And if you can do it 10 times, it would be even faster than the regular body flicker. Abido explained as he kneeled down near Guy, and his hands started to glow green. And God knows what kind of speed you can accomplish, you can combine it with your body flicker. After helping with Guy, Abido started to walk in a random direction. He didn't fully explore Kanoha yet, so in few times when he had breaks, he would walk around the village. Anyhow, was he teaching Mike Guy and died the Rocky Shiki techniques? Yes. Why? Well, multiple reasons. Firstly, the Rakushiki techniques need very well-trained bodies to perform. Not even Shinobis with their trained bodies could perform any of them without Chakra. Abido was just new to training, and it would take him a year or two to just gain the physique that was needed for Rakushiki, or get very near it, and use Chakra to compensate for the lack of physical strength. And then would be the part of trial and error. In the One Piece world, it might have worked immediately, but here in the Naruto world, it would take trial and error to rework the technique. And that might take quite a while. One thing about the Shuringen is he could copy any ninjutsu and tijutsu within his body limits. So he wanted to make Might Dai and Guy perfect both Soru and Geppo for him, so that he can easily copy them to his arsenal. Should he be worried about other Ichiha being able to copy it? Nope. Cause of how tough Might Dai was training his legs to use Geppo, and with the negatives of Soru from Might Guy. He was sure that even if the techniques were perfected, unless someone was a hardworking manic like him or a strength freak like Tsunade who enhances her strength with pure chakra control, no one would be able to do it. Sure, other Shuringen user would be able to copy the form. But in practicality that would be all he could do. Copying Tsunade's strength, Rekage's speeder advanced version of Tejutsu, needs very well-trained bodies to do. Or if it wasn't the case in the war, Madara and Abido would have copied their opponent's moves. And also, Abido wanted to learn the Eight Gates from Dai. He had searched the clan archives and asked about the concept to Granny Mai. There was not even a single mention of the Eight Gates. The second breathing technique that he had that increased his body temperature so much that he can't stay conscious, he got the feeling if he learned even one of the Eight Gates, he could unlock the breathing technique's mystery. So, it might be a secret technique from the Might family that Dai created. And he wants to learn that, and only by sharing and gaining their trust, could he be possible to do it. Might Dai was energetic and positive. But he was no fool. With how reputed the Ichiha clan was, why would he be willing to share his hard-earned technique with Abido, who was gifted with the Shuringen? Unless of course, Abido does something in return. 
It wasn't that he thought lowly of might die. But that was how the world works, give and take. You help others, they help them back. And there's nothing wrong in that. If you don't then either you are a kind naive fool or a douchebag. Of course, he didn't want Mike Dai to die. Maybe sharing the techniques with him could save his life with the Kyrianians later down the line. Abido wanted to be the master of all trades. Was he greedy? Yes. Ninjutsu, Jinjutsu, Fuinjutsu and even Tujutsu, he wanted them all. But he couldn't only do everything himself. And a little help didn't hurt, did it? It might even gain him people that would be very loyal to him in the future. With Danzo, Madara, the Chihai elders or even Hirazin for that matter, he needed powerful friends. As Abido walked towards another unknown part of Konoha, he started using the sound-based Jinjutsus that he used on Mike Guy. Jinjutsu are of two types, the most common one used a medium to cast, for it as it was was eye contact, or for others, it was touch or even going through hand seals, before spreading your chakra like a dome. In the latter case Jinjutsu, bringer of darkness, was used in that way it took much of the user's chakra. But the sound based Jinjutsus was very easy to perform. Even more so if you have wind release. The other type of Jinjutsu was called semi-physical, like the standard clone Jutsu, the clones were intangible and would do nothing. And everyone could see them, and no chakra was needed to be sent toward the target. It was mostly useless, but Abido wanted to get better at it as well. Other than skilled sensors or Jutsu users, in the heat of battle people could be fooled by that. The fake teleportation trick he pulled on Guy was one of that. Just the thought of putting your enemies in Jinjutsu that they didn't know of can be a matter of life and death. So he needed to practice it on others, and by walking and casting sound-based Jinjutsu on the civilians where Anbu usually didn't patrol was a good way to gain experience. He could use both types of Jinjutsus with the sound release he got from the bats. And the best part was it didn't need any hand seal, but very good chakra control. He didn't cast any huge illusions, small ones like changing one's shirt color, or thinking that they were walking barefoot, or they lost their wallet small stuff. And he even used the on Genins that walked around in his way. It was a very good way to get well familiarized with the sound-based Jinjutsus. As he was walking by a training ground area, he saw a Genin, by the head bat of Kanoha around his arm. He might be around the age of 8 or 10. So he was a talented one practicing martial arts on a tree. The poor thing was already white without its bark. Abido might have mistaken him for a Hayuga if the kid wasn't on the other side of the village, and didn't dress up as one. So, Abido casted a small Jinjutsu on the Genin. A simple illusion that he spent too much time spending on training and he needed to go home. But unlike what he expected the kid spun around looking at Abido, and the boy flared his chakra. Kai. Breaking out of the Jinjutsu. And he knew why one of the boy's eyes was different. It was brown in color, like another one, but it had veins popping out it. Just like a Byakugan user. Oh shit. Explain yourself, kid. The boy said, glaring at him. Why did you put me in a Jinjutsu or more importantly, how did you put me in one? He frowned looking at him. Abido wanted to play it off. He disliked using his Ichiha lineage to get out of problems. But it was the easy way out so he activated his Sharingans in both eyes. What do you mean, Hayuga? Why would I put you in one? The boy frowned again, annoyed this time. I am not a Hayuga. My name is Mukai Kohinata. What do you mean, Hayuga? Why would I put you in one? The boy frowned again, annoyed this time. I am not a Hayuga. My name is Mukai Kohinata. But seeing the Ichiha crest on his shoulder, he became a bit worried and bitter. Yeah, I think it was a misunderstanding. Abido blinked. He knew who it was he was a character from Itachi Shinden novel. Mukai Kohinata. A non-Hayuga with a natural Byakugan cause of his lineage. One of his ancestors was a Hayuga, who married out of the clan. And a person who was talented enough to take both Anbu Shisui and Itachi at once. A man who was given the killing order by Danzo himself. The only reason why he lost the fight against the two Chihas was cause of Shisui's Manjiku Sharingan. Fuck. He needed to make a good impression on him. So he deactivated his Sharingan. Giving a more gentle look things can still be fixed. He hoped. No, I'm sorry. I was just practicing my Jinjutsu and accidentally put you in one. I hope I can make it up to you. The boy seemed to ease a bit. 
Even though he wasn't from the Hyuga, he knew the rivalry between the clans. And didn't want any help from any of them he might have had their bloodline, but against an Ichiha who had a Sharingan. It might create trouble for his mother. So Mukai wanted to reject the offer or you don't have to, but then the boy's stomach growled. Abido chuckled, you know Kohinata-san, as an apology, why don't I treat you to a meal? The boy wanted to reject. But no, I insist, please. The boy showed a hesitant smile, but nodded. He also was curious as to who the Ichiha was, so young and unlocked the Sharingan. He didn't know much about the Ichiha, but didn't they need to awaken their Jujutsu? So he was a bit curious and with that, both of the boys looked for a nearby restaurant to share a meal. Abido started some small talks at first the boy was a bit hesitant, cause of the Ichiha being much younger than him. But after the food came in and Abido formally introduced himself, the Byakugan user was very much interested in him. Abido was kinda famous after the hospital incident, and the boy was quite happy to meet him. Abido wanted to make an impression. And so he asked if he could see him practice his j- oh, it might disappoint you, but Abido san my technique isn't actually the same gentle fist that the Hyuga clan uses. After easing down a bit, Mukai spoke. My grandfather was a Hyuga who broke out of the family after the Hyuga joined Kanoha. And I never met the man, so I am just trying to copy what I see other academy Hyuga doing. Abido laughed, and that made the other boy blink. Copying stuff is what we red eye people do Abido shook his head, a smile appeared on Mukai's face. It's just funny, you are trying to copy us as well. You are certainly not like other Chihaz Abido san. Oh, I get that a lot. And stop using honorifics call me just Abido, and I will call you Mukai if don't mind it. The boy shrugged, sure I am just a few years older than you. But we are of the same rank so it should be fine. Oh, but Mukai I am still not a genin. The Byakugan user blinked, A, eh, but you already unlocked your eyes, can't you do the basic academy jutsus? It's quite easy. No no. I can do it, but it's just that I don't want to graduate earlier than my friends. Abido lied with an honest smile. Wow I didn't think that clan kids like you would be this humbled. Mukai blinked. Not graduating cause of his friends, Abido might be a nice kid he thought. Honestly, I thought you would be stuck of fools like the other Chihas I have met. And boasted about your clan or something like that, but did you really- Abido acted a bit shy, I got my shit beaten, but hey, I did leave a few scars on him. Mukai was just awed. Not even a genin, yet he went up against an Iwa Jonin. There was also a rumor that Kagami was training him, but Abido looked a bit shy, so he didn't ask. Anyway, I am also learning about Tujutsu from a good teacher if you want, you can join in. He might not have the Byakugan. But he's honestly, the best Tujutsu expert in the village Mukai blinked, do you mean, Kagami Ichiha? No, Kagami sensei is good at ninjutsu, and Jinjutsu Abido acted costly, but he did see Mukai get awed from the corner of his eye. Honestly, impressing kids was a lot easier than he thought. The man might seem a bit underwhelmed, but he's a hidden gem I tell you I do get some bad eyes from my clan from learning from him. But wait he's not an Ichiha. What clan is he from? No clan, actually. What? Mukai was a bit surprised, Abido was clearly an Ichiha prodigy, and he was learning to jutsu from a non-Ichiha wait, is that even allowed? Abido laughed, the Ichiha are bad with their pride just like the Hayuga. But they don't stop me that much cause of me saving the Ichiha princess and all. And Kagami sensei also has my back, so I can do a lot of stuff and get away with it. He said the last part like a kid that was getting off with pulling pranks. Mukai was just amazed. He didn't know what to say. Abido saw the look of amazement in the boy's eyes and capitalized on it. Hey you don't have to train with him if you already have a teacher you should have Jonin teacher. After graduation Mukai shook his head, no, I will be more than happy to join the training. Unfortunately, my sensei is a nar, and that lazy prick only gives me pointers he won't protest if I learn from someone else. But he might be the only non-medical, non-hyuga I know of that know quite a lot about Tinketsu points. So he might be able to help you come up with your own style. Abido said, my dai did know quite a lot about the human body. Even Abido was surprised when he pointed out a few mistakes in his fighting style during sparing. But then again, this man did make the 8 gates from scratch, and the gates do rely on Tinketsu points. 
the Bayakidin user nodded. He needed to improve, even though he was a bit skeptical about Abido. But something in Mukai told him to trust the boy. Maybe he could be even better than the Hayugas if he could train with Abido. Mukai himself was talented in Tejutsu. As Nara Sensei often pointed it out, but he didn't have any good teacher. If an Ichiha was learning from that so-called good teacher, why couldn't he? He didn't have anything to lose. Abido clapped his hands, that's great. If you are free we can meet him now. Again I warn you he might not look the part, but he's actually a very good fighter. Sure I'm free that day, a very good friend was made between a Byakugan user and a Shuringan user. And with those leading events, a skilled Tejutsu expert would be born a Tejutsu specialist, that would be feared equal to Kanoha's Green Beast. A few days later, the streets of Kanoha was a bit uneasy, cause of a certain rumor that's been spreading around. Have you heard it? A civilian woman spoke to another, what you haven't? The other lady looked at her, why, what happened? Did some important shinobi die? The first woman shook her head, it's something worse. She said, and continued when she saw her friend's reaction, have you heard of the White Fang Sakumo Haddock? Oh, you mean the hero of the previous war. He gained quite the fame in the last few years hasn't he? She spoke with comfort before it turned into a horror. Don't tell me, he died in the last war. He helped my husband in the last war the first lady shook his head, he's alive, but because of his lack of responsibility, we might be seeing another war. The woman gasped, she had a child now. If war happens, her husband would be drafted to war again, and she didn't want to repeat those sleepless nights. I don't know the details, but he and his comrades got caught during a secret meeting between Kumo and Iwa. And now they are demanding something from the village. The second lady bit her lips, you you don't think that those accursed village would start another war again? Don't they have any shame they lost both of the wars already? The first lady nodded. But we aren't in a good position for war the only clan that's standing powerful right now is the Hayuga clan. If Sakumo didn't blow the mission up he's such a coward. The other lady gasped, you you shouldn't speak that way. The other shinobis might charge you for a felony. The first lady snorted, you don't know, but everyone is saying the same thing. Of course, the first lady did get some funding for seeding the rumors. She was of the many that was flaming the flames. Countless other conversations were happening throughout the village of Kanoha. No one knew the full details of the mission of what had happened, but all knew that a war might come due to the White Fang's mistake. The same people that once praised Sakumo, had now turned their backs on him. It all happened cause of a certain clan head who was making his last effort to hold on to his seat. In the Hokage building, the Hokage ordered all of the Anbu in the room to disappear. In front of him, sat a few of his close allies, who he would trust his life on. All of them sat in the Hokage room, to discuss something very important. Danzo Shimur, Kahara Yudatin, Hamura Mitakado, and lastly Tarifu Akimichi. Including Hiruzen himself, all five of them were powerful shinobi. The only seat that remained empty was the seat for a certain Ichiha who was out of the village. Usually, it was quite rare for all of them to come and discuss a single matter. But today was different. What should you do Hiruzen? Kumo is demanding too much from us, Kahar Yudatain asked the Hokage without his honorifics, due to the grim of the situation. As one of the few retired accomplished Kanoichi in Kanoha, she held a lot of power. We can't go to another war, she is right Hemer agreed, fixing his glasses. We can't let a war happen due to the inability of one shinobi. What do you want Hiruzen to do throw Sakumo under the bus? Tarifu Akimichi the large man snorted, crossing his arms, you all see it as a bad thing that he failed the mission I see it the other way around. He saved his comrades rather than the mission that had 50-50 chances to begin with. I don't see any negative isn't that what the shinobis of Kanoha should do. Tarifu you aren't thinking straight. It's more than that right now the other villages are demanding compensation. Danzo spoke, his black eyes gleaming in the darkness, what Sakumo did can cost us a war. If the other villages can manage to convince their daimyos, and Kanoha isn't in the position for that. You're stretching it way too far the other villages always complain, it's nothing new. Tarifu snorted. Even Hiruzen felt a bit odd about it. But Danzo continued, out of the three San and Omi Rachimarus in the village Kagami is still healing from his injuries, and we don't have any new batch of Jonin this year. 
Other cage level shinobis like the clan heads, will only try to use politics to not get in the front line think about it. Kanoha can't go to war right now. It would be better to Rifu slammed his fist on the table, it would be better to what give away Sukumo to the other villagers. What the fuck are you thinking? Logically, Danzo said with a challenging eyebrow. The others in the room held a casual expression, it was nothing new for them. Even with the thick killing intent in the air. Sukumo is an exceptional shinobi of Kanoha, giving him to the other villages would not only make us look weak, but it also might seed distrust among our ranks. Terefu blinked, he was a bit surprised that Danzo was opposed to the idea. But there should be a catch there was always a catch with Danzo. We could have done that if it was only the other villages wanted compensation, but not only did Kumo, Iwa, and Land of Iron want him to be executed for interfering in their diplomatic trade. Also, the Hyuga clan wants compensation as well for their failed mission, that could jeopardize their clan, they did fund the whole mission, which Sakumo failed. For a while, no one spoke. What happened was quite bad. After the return of Ryo Hayuga, the clan head of the Hayuga clan wanted his son's eyes back. So he had set up an S-rank mission for any elite Anbu to take. Kagami wasn't in a condition to go, so Terifu who was on his team couldn't participate. Danzo wanted to focus on his team more, while the other two elders had retired and joined the civilian council. So Sakumo took the mission as he was the fastest one in Kanoha after Kagami. He found confirming intel that Kumo was making a deal with Iwa. So he had his team go out to intercept them in the Land of Iron. Where fighting was prohibited among the great nations. Sakumo and his team spied on both of Iwa's and Kumo's diplomatic teams for days, and when the exchange took place. Sakumo and his team saw what it was, for the confirmed alliance in the next war, Iwa had handed over their acquired by Akugan to Kumo to solidify the alliance. Sakumo wouldn't have attacked them, as they were still in the land of iron. Yet, when he saw Kumo's team wanting to reverse some in a way. Sakumo attacked, there was no other way, he couldn't let those eyes fall. Kumo had made major scientific development in recent years. Some of them are even greater than the land of rain, if they got the eyes, they might be able to reverse or engineer their abilities. It would be catastrophic for Kanoha. Yet when they attacked, they had to face Kumo's eight tails Jinchuriki Blue Bee. Sakumo might have been able to hold him off, but the others so Sakumo took the risk, and somehow got hold of the glass container that held the Byakugan. His team should have held the Eight Tails Jinchuriki off while Sakumo left. Iwa was also informed, and they wanted to help their new allies, so a full-on fight broke out in the Land of Iron. Even more, Sakumo should have left, he should have prioritized the mission. Yet the man didn't. When he saw his team getting near death, and getting killed, he sacrificed the mission to save his comrades. Even though three of his Anbu members are dead, the other five including Sakumo made it back. If Sakumo had run away, his whole Anbu team would be dead, and then the enemy Shinobis from the other villages might catch up to him to get those eyes. Mainly with Han being a very fast Shinobi with his particular use of boil release. Now the Land of Iron, Iwa, and Kumo have a kill on site order for Sakumo. And all of them are wanted compensation. If Sakumo had the Byakugan in his hand, he could have shown it as evidence and got out of the whole mess. And Kanoha could have had the upper hand. But now things were different there was no right or wrong here. Only decisions made by individuals with their own beliefs. Even still, failing the mission wouldn't have put him in such a bad position. It was just that when the Hyuga clan came to know about it. They were furious. One of their own members who was from the branch family was on Sakumo's team. And he might have, but they didn't want that, oddly enough, they wanted Sakumo's head. Something felt wrong about the whole situation. Mainly the acts of the current Hyuga head. It was a bit extreme. But Sakumo did fail the mission because of his own decision. And of course, everyone in the room, knew that the rumors that were going on in the village, might have something to do with the Hyuga clan. And of course, seeing the internal conflict, the other villages contacted their daimyo to declare war warning. Which wasn't that bad, but if you at all- And if a war does break out and they don't have a big clan like the Hyuga backing them up things might get messy. Thinking all of it could be stopped if they gave away one shinobi it was just the easy option. Of course, Sakumo was strong, he was stronger than the Sanin, maybe even equal to Kagami with his particular Shuringen, everyone knew that. 
Yet all the question came down to was sacrificing one man, or the nation. Danzo spoke again, his face a bit sad, we can call him, strip him of his ranking at least he will be alive this way. It might be enough to stop the other villages to start. They're just angry at Sakumo not us also, the land of iron can be giving some gold and other resources, and at the same time the Hayuga clan won't get any ideas of leaving the village. Are you even hearing yourself? The Akamichi said loudly, that's akin to giving a shinobi a death sentence he did so much for the war. His strength is still comparable to with the three Sanins combined. Maybe only Kagami and Hiruzen can hold him back if he snapped Kaharu shook her head. He had sustained quite a bit of injury in his failed mission. We are looking at a fallen legend here. She also sighed. It's a tough decision when you consider that the clanless shinobi held off Blue Bee and Han at the same time. The civilian shinobis wouldn't be happy after that. Actually, Sakuma wasn't clanless. He was from the Haddock clan. But most minor clans had the same rights as civilians, so people treated them that way. It was also why clanless Shinobis looked up to Sakumo very much. He held the same respect that was once held by Dan Kato of the Anbu commanders. Hamura nodded and added, We should do something about it before the Haddock plans to rouge with his kid Terifu Akimichi, couldn't hold back his anger, and looked at the Hokage, here is an you don't honestly believe that he has done so much for the village. Can we just fake his death or something he can be useful if another war- There are allies here and also had guilt in his eyes. Danzo looked at the Akamichi, you are not thinking clearly my friend. The Akamichi wanted to snort at the Shimmer, but held himself back, we could have faked his death, or written a false report if it was any other clan than the Hayuga. There are village morgue specialists, and even if Arachimaru and Sunade were to work together, it might be tough to fake his death. And if something goes wrong, then the Hayuga would try to separate or even go on a civil war. Hamura finished. You are seeing someone else in him. Danzo said, glancing at the empty seat, he and Sakumo are different. Circumstances were different. Everyone knew what Danzo was talking about something happened similar not too long ago. Where Kagami did the same thing for Terifu, and that was why the Akamichi was alive. Terifu almost broke out in anger. Really you say that that day, if Kagami didn't hold Rashi back, my son would have lost his father. Kagami and Sakumo did the same thing the only one who I think should be blameworthy is the Hayaga. If they put their seals to protect their eyes, why not put them on everyone? Kaharu shook her head, we can't do anything, and a decision is to be made before things go worse. Or any more worse. Danzo also sighed, he looked a bit sad. But Hiruzen and even Terifu suspected it might be an act. The Shimeras were always known for their slyness after Nara's intelligence. Well, one of Sakumo's own friends that he saved by compromising the mission, blames him as well. And that was a Hayuga was a branch member of course that slave would bow down to the main family's pressure. Terifu Akamichi shot back, the Hayuga head, Bunko or whatever his name was that man is only doing this to stay in is the head. Even other members of the main family don't support his ruling. But now seeing Sakumo fail the mission he's railing up the branch members to be against Sakumo. Don't you see that he's trying to put the blame on him? Hamura nodded, we know all of that, but what are you going to do blame the Hayuga head? He is a clan head to remember, if you didn't give your position away to your younger brother, Terifu you would understand. It will only seed distrust in the large clans on the other hand, Sakumo is from a small clan with few members, only he being an accomplished shinobi among them. This is a very good way out. Kaharu added, also, it should be noted that we need to make the decision quick. Giving the death penalty would be too much, so I agree with Danzo with this one at least this way he would alive this way. Maybe even join the academy as a teacher or something, but we need to do this quick before he gets any idea to rebel. Are you people even hearing yourself? Terifu was in pure outrage, this wasn't the type of village that he was protecting all his life. What you people are saying is only because all of you have retired if you were still in the field, I am sure you would think otherwise. Kaharu glared at him, but the Akamichi didn't budge, what are you trying to say Akamichi that now that we are retired, we don't know the trials of the shinobi life shinobi life is all about sacrifice. Yeah, then let the Hayuga clan make the sacrifice their oh so great prince gets kidnapped, gets his eyes gauged, and now when Sakumo misses a chance to get those parlor eyes back, he is to be blamed. Didn't he do enough in the last war? 
The only reason the Sun Agakur is at bay is because of him. Tarifu sighed in defeat, leaning back in his chair. The large man wasn't very pleased with what was happening. He didn't want good shinobis like this to go away like this. Something similar happened to Dan Kato after he failed one of the missions that was given to him by the fire daimyo. After that, he was sent to a suicide mission where he lost his life. Only Danzo and Sir Toby knew that, and what did that accomplish, Tsunade losing trust in the village itself. Hiruzen didn't want to repeat the mistake, yet he felt powerless. He should have retired and focused on his family, rather than being a loyal shinobi of Kanoha. His loyalty is only leading him to his death. Tarifu mumbled. Fuck, I even I should think about retiring. Sakumo is a shinobi of Kanoha I will try to sort the mess out with Kumo and Iwa, I do hope that we can deal with the diplomatic problem without any of that. But the Hyuga clan demands will only increase as days went by here as in first time in a while spoke, his face was devoid of emotions. He wanted to do the last effort, before things go bad. He only hoped that he succeeded. For now the meeting is dismissed. Danzo stay with me. The other elders stood up and left. Only the Hokage and Danzo were sitting in their chairs. Yet the tension in the room remained the same. What are you doing Danzo? Hiruzen finally asked now that everyone was away. He didn't seem pleased. What do you mean Hiruzen? Danzo asked, as he sipped tea. Don't play the fool with me Sakumo. he's no ordinary shinobi. Hiruzen said, I'm sure with your political connection with the Hayuga, you could have stopped things from escalating further. Danzo shook his head. I wasn't in the village when this happened, remember? And even if I could, the Hayuga head would have always blamed Sakumo for failing the mission. Even I have my hands tied in this one. Of course, the Shimura lied. Oh, sometimes I question that Hiruzen shook his head taking his pipe out. Sakumo Haddock, he's our sensei's son. Taburama sensei wouldn't Danzo snorted, Taburama sensei wouldn't what? Throw his son if it means saving his own village. Don't be soft-hearted Hiruzen. All Hokage are required to do so even sacrifice their own families, if it means to betterment the village. You have changed Danzo Sakumo Haddock or Sakumo Senju did quite a lot for our village, and now the village should repay him this way, he blew out the smoke, and sighed, age visible on his face. The shoulder cloth on his left side is proof that he's the son of Taburama, and he would have been proud of what his son had accomplished. But now Danzo shook his head. I told you to reveal his lineage after the war had ended. That would have made him a good candidate for the next Hokage and our enemies to fear the Senjus once again, but it's a good thing he didn't. He said crossing his arms, coldness in his dark eyes. The man isn't fit for that position sure he is strong. But only strength couldn't get you anywhere in the dark world of Shinobis. The first Hokage was strong, yet he died younger than his younger brother. And Taburama sensei would understand the choice shinobi life is all about sacrifice. Hiruzen wanted to say something, but things weren't going his way. It never was after he took the damn hat maybe he was getting old. He wanted to say more, but his so-called friends stood up and started leaving. If there's nothing else to discuss, I will go and look after my Anbu team, they might be able to do damage control, if I can send them to Kumo with some infiltration mission. With that Danzo left the room. Though, the Hayuga won't just stop because of it, Hiruzen in sight again. He had sent a message to Kagami to get back here. He needed his help right now. Other than him and Danzo, Taburama only shared the secret of his family with him. Hiruzen also sent a mission letter to Jureya to have an independent investigation on the matter. After Madara left the village, Hashirama was still Hokage then. Taburama wanted to settle down, but the arrangement with the other four great nations weren't going well. And Madara was out there. Taburama thinking rationally didn't name his newborn a Senju. He told his wife to name him after her clan. Taburama was gone, and so was his wife. And now Sakumo Haddock his son would meet a very bad fate. Sometimes he wondered if he was incompetent as a leader. On the other hand, as Danzo Shimura left, he had several things running through his mind. His thoughts were still on the failed mission of Sakumo. Sakumo Haddock a man that made Sunagakur crumble. A man that held of two Jinchurikas Han and Blue Bee in his so-called failed mission. He was a very good shinobi, yet he lacked the darkness with him. Just like Hiruzen, he wasn't meant to be a leader. Kanoha wasn't ready for another war, 
nor was it ready to lose a clan like Hayuga. If by sacrificing one shinobi his village could get out of war, Danzo would happily oblige. Sure what the coward Banko Hayuga was doing, spreading misinformation to ruin Sakumo's reputation and get the blame onto him was considered bad. Even it could be called treason in some aspects. But in his plan for the betterment of the village, he was a necessary piece. Where Sakumo was not. This way he could also maintain good relations with the Hayuga, who are giving very good shinobi to join the ranks of Roots. Unlike other shinobis, he had killed off his emotions long time ago. Here isn't there anyone who didn't were fools. For what he did was always for the village. A trait of narcissists was that they always believed their own lies. Even though he said that he did everything for the village. But deep down it was something else. All of it got shrunken in the face of the greed he had for the seed of the hokage. And he would unconsciously mark those that could go in his way. For example, Sakumo Hadaker Senju who was a hokage candidate was a problem that needed to be dealt with. But he himself didn't know that. For he believed that he did everything for his the village. Abido Ichiha was in a pinch here. So, I'm in one of the most important moments in the Naruto world. Abido thought as he had also heard the rumors. He had just finished training with Might Die, and he didn't know what to do. Even though this world was different from the original, because of his choices. Yet key events remained the same. But the main question was could I really change anything? If I am not wrong, Sakumo committed suicide to all of this for what shame. Suicide was never an option. But then again, this world was different what if there are other unknown factors what if someone made him do that as he laid on the grassy field, pondering on what to do, he heard someone running toward him. It was my die. My youthful student you have finished your exercise that's pretty good. You surprisingly have good stamina for a 5 year old, even with the sum of the insane stuff you do if you keep it up. You will catch up to my guy in no time. He said rubbing his small patch of beard. What Mike Dai was talking about was, Abido training to the brink of physical exhaustion, and using medical ninjutsu to replace all of it, and start again. It wasn't unheard of, as Tsunade herself came up with this method to train. But Abido was clearly taking things too far. Yet his body was keeping up, even Gai and Dai were quite surprised by his grind. It was as if he was passed by a ghost or something. Go get some youthful rest, so that you can recover or miss something on your mind. Abido blinked at the question. Was he being that readable? But Dai Sensei I am thinking about the rumors that have been going around of Sakumo Haddock. What do you think about the situation? Oh you mean, Haddock Sakumo he's a very formidable shinobi at Jonin yet very young age. He said, his voice carrying a bit of envy in them. Even though he was strong, he was still stuck as a genin cause of the stupid rank system. And he's already a cage level in terms of strength we don't want any new war to happen. But I do personally agree with his decision. It's not very youthful to leave your comrades to die in a mission. Even if it was so important nothing could be more important than the life of your loved ones. Honestly, Abido was a bit speechless he just asked the question at random. But he didn't think that I would have the same thoughts as him. He wasn't as simple as he looked. And so Abido smiled. Thanks, Sensei now I know what to do with that Abido jumped out by doing a kip up from the ground. I'm glad I can help. Dai said, oh I have to go my team has called for another mission. Help Mukai with his training he is a bit behind both of you, but I'm sure he'll catch up. With that Dai started sprinting down the mountain. Dai was doing some combat training with Mukai, and he wasn't doing good. Well, neither did he. But Abido was a bit better thanks to his Sharingan, an additional recovery granted by his recovery breathing. Anyhow he would think about the training and grinding later. He needed to do something else would helping Sakumo give him anything in return. No. But you never needed a reason to do a good deed. He couldn't do much to begin with, but he could cash in what he could. Nightwing about the technique that we have discussed. How many can I make it at a time? The bat spoke from the shadows, around 10 to 12 more if you can get better at it, and we use fewer bats. Nightwing replied, and Abido nodded. Things were going to get political here. Kakashi Haddock wasn't pleased the past few days. His father the only man he looked up to had been very sad lately. His father was a very emotional man, his mother used to say. Look after your dad, dear. He clearly remembered his mother's last words. It had been a year since that day. 
and Kakashi promised his late mother to look after him. Sakumo Haddock was many things, an accomplished shinobi, a very good teacher, and one of the well-respected Anbu commanders, but he wasn't a man of treason. How could people accuse his father of that awful thing? He didn't know. Kakashi was no ordinary boy, he may be five, but he could see through people easily. The same people that once respected his father for his strength and merit in the war, had turned their back against him. They were the ones who betrayed him. He had done some research on the rumors, but most of them were just that. Rumors, no one how or what mission Sakumo failed, only that it would lead to war. It couldn't be that bad right, he only hoped. It was just another day for Kakashi. He had passed as an independent genin. Meaning he needed no team, and no jonin instructor. Most of the things he could have learned easily from his father. He was just back from wall duty with Maribashi Kasuk. The man had heard the rumors and said not to pay attention to it. He was his senior, so he tried to listen. Honestly, why that man was still a genin he didn't know. Anyway, he tried to ignore the rumors or not pay attention to it. But it didn't make him less frustrated when people recognized him and looked at him with disgust. Mainly those white-eyed bastards, he didn't know what the mission was, but it had something to do with them. Just cause they are from a big clan they think they can get away with anything tch. Losers. He thought. Hey, you stop. Kakashi tried to ignore that as he started speeding up. Unless he was called by his rank, he as a shinobi didn't have to respond. So he started making his- He looked behind and saw two Hayuga boys, both of them looked different, one was a bit taller than the other. Another one was a girl with black hair, with ordinary features. All of them were around the age of 12 or 13, Jenin for a few years maybe, definitely not a Chunin because of the lack of vest. What do you want? He grunted. Didn't you hear, boy? That Hido-san was calling you. The taller one said, but then again, what do you expect from the son of a traitor? The other Hayuga clucked, don't do that you will scare the brat. Kakashi was confused as to why the first Hayuga was using respectful language to speak to the second one. But the Hayuga clan was messed up, he had heard, had some inner rankings and whatnot. Maybe it had something to do with that. The second Hayuga continued, we came here to give you a warning. Don't do anything like your father or we will end your career as a shinobi. And that's a promise. The other Hayuga finished, as he glared with his activated by Akugin. Whatever, loser. Takashi didn't want to engage in sort of shit. He had better things to do, like training or ignoring the buffoons. Boy, I don't like the look you're giving. We should break some of his bones so that he knows the serious of it. But Kakashi started to walk away, hey, don't ignore us. Didn't your mom teach you manners? He tried to grab Kakashi who was about to leave. Come on, she might be a whore if she slept with the traitor Sakumo. The girl spat, before she could say another word, Kakashi moved. The speed was readable to the pair of Byakugan active. Yet both of Hayuga couldn't stop the oncoming attack. Borka nose, dislocated shoulder, and a kick to the nuts for the Hayuga named Hido. While the other Hayuga got a broken nose, and a kick to his chin that knocked him out, as he rolled on the ground. Keep my family's name out your fucking mouth, Kakashi said in a whisper, but the girl heard it fine. While the girl took a step, back shaking in fear when Kakashi made eye contact with her. Yu Yu, but she felt a punch to the gut, before she vomited out her breakfast, and was kneeling on the ground. Listen here look in my eyes. Kakashi slapped her in the face before she reluctantly made eye contact. Yet she was afraid, she felt tears start to form in her eyes. If I ever see any of you again, I will make sure to do some permanent damage. Don't forget that. Just because I look like a kid, don't think for a second I'm weak. I am still a genin. And I am enough for bootlickers like you. With that he freed her, but then he thought something, just to make this sequel Kakashi kicked forward, hearing a satisfying crunch. Three broken noses now that's equality. Kakashi spat on the ground before he used body flicker to go away. Or it was a jonin, or mainly a jonin that worked in the Ichiha police force. Answer me shinobi. I but he didn't give Kakashi time to answer. You attacked your fellow comrades the Ichiha looked at him with his Sharingan. Wait that clan symbol are you related to Sakumo Haddock? Kakashi even though came from a minor clan, still wore his clan. Haddock means farmland, and perhaps true to that name, their clan symbol resembles a sectioned out piece of farmland. 
They were the ones who attacked me first. Kakashi spat, if you were a bit early you would have noticed. He hated all those eyes freak. Shuringen, by Akugen, just cause they have a flashy kick Genkai they showed it off so much she hated that. Answer me boy I'm your senior in rank. Kakashi wanted to spat back, but, I'm sure you are an old voice said, making both Shinobis flinch due to the newcomer. Hokage saw me both of them stood staring looking at the Hokage in front of them. I have seen what happened. The Hokage said, holding his pipe as he smoked. I'm sure it's a misunderstanding isn't that right Kakashi? Ah uh, yes, Hokage saw me, Kakashi said, not making anyone believe it's true. The Hokage showed a kind smile. See now go on Kakashi. Kakashi nodded, yes, Hokage Sama. Before he used the body flicker to get away. Here is inside internally seeing this, he had been keeping his eyes on Kakashi. He was the youngest gen in Kanoha had ever since, very talented and hardworking at that. So he was a bit saddened when he saw the villagers treating the boy roughly because of his father. Some even attack this one might have been the fourth one. The only reason he stepped in was because one of the Hayugas was from the main brunch member and things could escalate. He didn't want that. Hiruzen saw much in of Tsunade in Kakashi, a grandson of Hokage who's getting rough in life. He could only do so much. Shinobi, Hiruzen said with a natural voice. Yes sir. The Uchiha said, a bit nervous. Charge all three of them with assault. And ban their Shinobi license for one month. The Uchiha gulped but nodded. He just hoped that he wouldn't get any punishment either. Kagami Uchiha stood in one of the houses in the Hayuga compound. It was no ordinary house, as one could see multiple guards outside of it. Yet when he walked up to one of the Hayuga elders' houses no one stopped him. Jinjutsu was a beautiful thing, once truly mastered. It was as if they couldn't see him. After following the trails from the land of hot springs it brought him here, he just hoped that the toad summoner was correct with his assertion. This wasn't very legal, even with his authority as an elder of Kanoha. After disabling the small few Injutsu ruins, he searched through the scrolls. He finally found the one he was looking for. His crows had informed him beforehand. It was good that he had the insight to send his crows here first. And when opened, the contents of the scroll. He couldn't help but twitch his brows. The Hayuga head would have a lot of explaining to do. But just to get a few more pieces, he went over to the houses of everyone he had suspected. Even going as far to use his Shuringen to probe through their memories a trick he picked up from the ninjas of the Yamanaka clan. And from what he gathered, this was really messed up. He sighed, how did things come to this? He shook his head, this would be different now. All the members of the Kanoha elders except one were gathered again in the Hokage tower. Hiruzen, there's no other way make your decision, Danzo said, his voice cold. It was just ripping the title of Sakumo to begin with sure it would defame him or even end his career. But this was, he wouldn't be able to go rogue. When a shinobi rejects clear order from the village, he can be sentenced to death or get his title ripped and be culled. Getting culled was the worst nightmare for a shinobi. At the time, a Hayuga or any medical nin would come and permanently shut off the ninja's tinketsus, chakra points, so that he can no longer use his chakra. This way the shinobi avoids death plenty, at the same time the village gets reassured that they won't have a missing nin running around. It was cruel in a way. But the shinobi world worked that way, a mix of light and darkness. And in a way, this way at least the son of his former teacher won't have to die Danzo thought. But if things don't go this way, he would need to approach Sakumo personally. All for the village. Please, think this through Tarifu said in a somewhat pleading voice. He didn't know of Sakumo's hidden origin, but he was a shinobi that cared deeply for his comrades, and seeing this unfold in front of his eyes. And his own son was a couple of years older than Kakashi, Sakumo's son. He just couldn't. Tarifu might not know of Sakumo's lineage, but for him, he was a great shinobi that worked hard for the village. Yet this was happening to him. He just wished he wasn't a part of it. How can he face his son and clansmen and tell them of the will of fire if this was the dark side of Kanoha? There is nothing to think about things are set up in this way, Kaharu said coldly and Hamara nodded. I don't think so a voice said out of the darkness, as all five heads moved toward it. It was a Chihakigami. When did you come back, Hiruzen said, with a somewhat relaxed smile. Maybe things could change. 
He didn't want things to end up this way. Sure if the decision was made, Sakuma wouldn't die. But living like that what about the future generation? What about little Kakashi he was the same as Tsunade, grandson of a Hokage. Even though he was sure that Kakashi didn't know that, would he be alright with the injustice that was done to his father? Buwako his wife, also told him to find other solutions. Yet he failed. He just hoped Kagami had something that could make better of the situation. It was also good, that some of Sakumo's followers, or fans if you call it, were fighting against the misspread rumors. Of course, they weren't going anywhere with it, but it was good to know, that some people trusted Sakumo even now. He had sent Anbu to stop the rumors before. But you could stop civilians, not Shinobis mainly Hayuga branch members were pissed that Sakumo lost the eyes. Even though the anger was misplaced for all observers. There is an important part of the information that is being left behind, Kagami said, as he took his seat at the round table. A single piece of info that changes the whole thing. Danzo frowned, raising an eyebrow. And what was that Kagami? Did you know several of Iwa Kanoichi left for retirement after the hospital incident? Danzo raised an eyebrow, before massaging his temples. Don't say you got that piece of info from Jurerie. Kagami rolled his eyes, while Hiruzen coughed. Continue. Yes, I did get the info from Jureya. He also tagged along with me in the village. Honestly, Hiruzen, you should discipline that boy more. I was kinda pissed at the encrypted letters he sent me during my visit to the land of whirlpools. The Uzumaki elders looked at me with squinted eyes, when they smelled female perfume on me. Kagami said while Hiruzen coughed again. Where did he go wrong with his three students? Using love letters to hide valuable information. Only the Toad Summoner would come up with that kind of thing. Kagami, you're getting carried away please continue, Kaharu said with a flat look. But honestly, she was holding herself back from having a laugh. Oh, yes, where was I? Yeah, many of the powerful Kanoichi of Iowa has gone on a break or on a permanent vacation. It wouldn't mean much, but unless you factor in that all of them were pregnant at once. Many eyebrows were raised. Where was the Ichiha going with this? Of course, Jiraiya would do such research. Danzo snorted. Arachimaru was a better sanin if you tell me. Even Tsunade if she didn't leave the village would be much more help than that pervert. Kagami shook his head, anyhow, your student, Jiraiya did some research and found it odd. Hasn't it been three months since the hospital massacre incident done by Iwa? And all of this adds up, so he sent me letters to look into it, as he was near the land of hot springs. Everyone got a bad feeling about this, but no one spoke. So, I did some personal info gathering after coming to village to Rifu blinked, wait, you came back to the village a while ago. Okay that's not important Kagami continue. Herzuin said. And it turns out Ryo Hayuga got milked when he was kidnapped by Iwa Shinobis. Kagami said he was giving it all not to break his emotionless face. And the Hayuga head was hiding that part of the info from the start I shouldn't have handed Ryo Hayuga to the clan first. He should have had his medical examination by the Anbu but, you can't be serious that's bad. Terifu said, one of the Hayugas that Sakumo saved, grabbed a random scroll that has some specially preserved semen in it. Kagami then tossed the thing towards Danzo. Who caught it with a twitching face. The others were glad it wasn't thrown at them. But all of them could see the wild veil of liquid. The Shimmer had placed it on the table in front of Hiruzen. I let the doctors run some tests and it was confirmed, Kagami said. The DNA matches Ryo Hayugas. H how much did they someone have to milk out a man to even do that? He said, shuddering out the last part. Kagami how many girls do you think is you know carrying half Hayugas? Every man in the room felt a bit uncomfortable. From Jureya's research it should be more than 10. And we still don't know if Kumo got some from Iwa as well. For some time no one spoke before all hell broke loose. This is outrageous Humer spoke. If what you are saying is true we should be the ones starting another war for them to even get nerves to put their hands on one of our noble clans. Those disgusting Iwa bastards Kumo did this before, but them Kahara said. But more importantly doesn't it mean treason the Hayuga should be questioned as a whole for hiding such valuable information. I am sure Banko Hayuga had something to do with the covering of his son's mistake. Not only that but if this information was reviled from the start. I would have sent two or three Anbu teams rather than one. 
then Sakuma wouldn't have failed, and this trauma wouldn't have started. Hiruzen said, he also didn't take it well. Yet they didn't. Tarifu opened his mouth, with a raised eyebrow, Okay, how did you gather the information from the Hayuga? I don't think they just handed them over with grace. Kagami chuckled, Oh, I took a small stroll into the Hayuga compound before coming here. Seriously, I don't get paid that well to do this stuff. Hiruzen shook his head helplessly, while others looked at him with shock. And it should have breaking into a Hayuga compound. Now isn't this just a role for tragedy? Scratch that, it would be enough to start a clan civil war. But the Akamichi just laughed, only Kagami would have the balls to pull that off. What could he say honestly? Even Danzo was processing the info hard. Even though the chances of half Hayuga getting there by Akigen were low. It wasn't impossible when you considered that it was from the main branch. And they made powerful Kanoichi of Iwa their mothers, so bloodline mix could happen. Iwa didn't have that many bloodline families, like Kumo or Kiri. But they still had some powerful clean families in that village. Rashi and Han were from those special bloodline clans that were capable of carrying tailed beasts. Both of them were Jinchurikis, if one of their clan members get pregnant with a Hayuga child. Only people with powerful Yang affinity could have Bijus sealed in them. Almost like the Uzumaki this was clearly worse than they imagined. Hiruzen finally spoke, this will need further discussion to get a solution, even though it the others didn't say anything, everyone had a grim expression. The situation wasn't good. Even Kagami who would usually hide this type of information from his Ichiha clan head, made a note to tell the current head about it. They were also clean with powerful Dejutsu users, if it can be done with Hayuga males, then other villages might target their clan as well. They almost did with Mikoto and Kana. In the long history of Ichiha, people did try to create their own sub-branch of Ichiha's by kidnapping, and almost all of them were stopped. In recent years no one dared to do it mainly cause of the fear that Madara Ichiha gave to the elemental nations. But this Hayuga incident should be dealt with before it can escalate any further. Even though it didn't sound well the Kanoha would have to send spies to kill those carrying any half Hayuga child, or kidnap them back to Kanoha. Killing pregnant mothers for their newborns people sometimes forget how cruel the shinobi world is. But it would be the only way so that situations don't get worse. Here's and spoke again, also, I will order my ambus to stop any other bad rumors about Sakumo spreading, and I will give a public announcement to close any further rumors off. Kagami and Tarifu felt glad that this was happening. And I will also, order Sakumo to reveal his lineage three people oddly looked when Hiruzen said the last part. Well Kagami and Danzo were surprised. And Danzo I will trouble you to bring all the Hayugas that are connected to this incident here, including the current head and his blind son. Hiruzen said while Danzo nodded. The Shimera was also irritated and downright angry. He had been played by the Hayuga, they were the ones that needed purging. He would personally see through it that Banco that cowardly bastard gets brought here with all the necessary tools to extract info. Now things added up. So the Hayuga head was buying time to clear off the other main family members that were opposing him. The information of having Hayuga halflings would get out eventually, but by then Banco Hayuga would secure his position as the clan head. Well, played Hayuga. Danzo thought, coldness in his eyes, some bloodlust was leaking out of him. But the others were just as tense as he was, only hears and noticed the difference. Tarifu and Kagami caught it, but by then he compassed himself. I will set up some Yamanaka and Nara, so that things go smoothly Tarifu said, looking at the enraged Danzo. He himself was angry, but he didn't want another situation to happen. We don't want to do anything overboard I am sure the others in the main family won't like it much if we do something irrational. Kaharu snorted, going by their standards the main family might even put their damage seal on him. If they don't kill him first, Hamar added. Well, my work here is done, and honestly I am quite low on chakra, so bye. With that, Kagami disappeared with a swarm of crows that left out of the window. Show off. Tarifu snorted. In light of recent rumors, we have set up an investigation. And here I found Sakumo Haddock not guilty of those recent rumors. Hiruzen stood on the roof of the Hokage Tower, where everyone could see him as he made the announcement. We have also found that someone might have gotten added benefits by slander a war hero like Sakumo. 
and anyone who from now on spreads the rumors any further will be questioned by the Ichiha police force or even the Anbu. The general audience was surprised to see the announcement that their favorite Hokage was making. Everyone trusted Hirazan for being the Hokage, whether it was good or not was another question. So when the public saw the Hokage announcing, the rumors about the White Fang were false. People started easily believe him. Sakumo is a great hero of Kanoha, and nothing will change that. The recent acquisition that Kumo and I went through was false and misleading after what they had done three months ago attacking a hospital. Hirazan continued. So, as the Hokage, I ask all the citizens of Kanoha to not believe in the false rumors that were set up by the enemies of the village. The will of fire won't be extinguished by the flames of evil. That's all. Thank you. With that, the announcement was over. People were muttering about it, and Abido and another silver hat were amongst the crowd. Abido was confused. He had heard the announcement. And it didn't make any sense. This didn't happen in the original series. As he started walking out he stared think, okay, something definitely changed. It hasn't been a week since rumors started spreading, and now the Hokage has stopped the whole thing. Why? As he started going towards the training area, he didn't see someone who was lazily walking behind him. Is me being here, creating a butterfly effect? Abido asked himself, it can't be right. It was a question that bugged him. If he didn't interfere in the hospital incident, then Iwa would have kidnapped Mikoto, Kana and even Granny Mai. If that happened, someone had to go and save them, cause Mikoto was Sasuke's mother. But due to Abido being here, it didn't go this way. And Abido was sure it saved many lives, mostly of Shinobis that would have to infiltrate Iwa to get them back. Even Kana was a live cause of that. Only the Hyuga was kidnapped. But it was the only significant event that Abido did something in, it made him famous, and made him the student of Kagami. But that was it how did Sakumo's name clear out then? He did some work to fight off the rumors, but he couldn't do anything significant. Abido could ask Nightwing to go into the Hokage Tower and peep in, but he wasn't sure if there was Jurei or not. His bats were very skilled spies. And would bet only sages could detect them. And there was a sage in Kanoha. And it was Jurei of the Sanin. Even though officially he was out on a mission, the Toad Summoner was sometimes spotted in Kanoha Hot Springs, peeping on girls. So he wasn't confident enough to send his bats there. He did send bats inside the Hayuga compound, cause of them making too many moves to destroy Sakumo's reputation. And they were connected somehow, but he still didn't get the full picture. The Hayugas were angry at Sakumo, and it had something to do with the eyes that was stolen from the Hayuga prince. But that was all the normal Hayuga members even some of the elders knew of. So he didn't get how and why Sakumo's reputation got cleared. But it did give him anxiety that every decision to save someone will cause unknown ripple effects. This incident worked in his favor, but others might not. It was then, Abido felt a hand above his head, and he felt the killing intent behind it. So he spun quickly, and kicked overhead, while taking out his famed kunai. But his kick got blocked, while his other leg got swapped, and his weapon taken out of his hand. Oh, a new toy, huh? Abido blinked when he heard the voice, and sure enough, it was Kagami Ichiha. And he scoffed, did you seriously have to do that? Oh, my. Kagami gasped, I was hoping you were going to ask when did you come back. But I guess some kids are way too cruel for their age. Abido rolled his eyes, doing a kick up to get off the ground. And give me that back. He snatched away the kunai from Kagami's hand. Anyway, is Kashina back as well? I need to let her see my new invention. Now, you are just being mean Abido. Kagami wiped away his fake tears. And here I was too eager to see my lil student. Good reflexes, by the way, it's good that you haven't been slacking off. Abido smirked, puffing his chest. Of course, I haven't. I'm going to be the best remember. Kagami chuckled. Is that why I can feel your chakra at nine different points in the village? He said, it's a good thing I found the real one. Oh, you're a censor. I forgot. Abido said, a bit tense. I ah, uh, I'm gonna call them off. Oh, please do. If the Hayuga finds that an Ichiha prodigy is framing them and contributing to ruin their reputation, things can go quite wrong. Kagami said, but then again wasn't it hypocritical to blame Abido for doing a similar thing? Very wrong in fact. 
Abido felt like a thief caught in his act. What could he say? He sent some help to spread the rumors that the Hyuga are to be blamed for losing their eyes, not Sukumo, who represented the so-called will of fire. Yet to Kagami's eyes it was all clear. It was a good thing his help wasn't needed now. Those damn eyes. Abido grumbled internally. But then again I can't wait to get mine. Kagami chuckled, seeing Abido's reaction. Call them happy for now. I'm not angry at you Abido. He said, kneeling down to his level. In fact, I am proud of you. That's what he wanted to say, but he held off the last part, the last thing he wanted to give in Ichiha was an ego. They had quite the much already. Now go to training ground 9 and wait for your punishment there Abido looked grim, hearing that. Just kidding. Kagami chuckled again, while the boy sighed in relief. But do go there Kashina is actually there with some souvenirs, I'm sure you will like it as an upcoming seal expert. Abido blinked in surprise in his eyes. Souvenirs from the Yuzumaki village. I can't wait. Kagami stood up looking at a flock of black dots. Ah so you figured out who your secret admirer was. He said, ruffling his hair. So, that's why it felt off. He chuckled when he took a step back, and bats started to merge with Abido. Disappearing within his clothes. One mature Shuringen and already started copying my trick. Why am I not surprised? Kagami mused. Okay, bye then. With that Kagami became a swarm of crows before vanishing in thin air. Abido snorted, show off. He said with his three Tomo Shuringen active, he was a bit pissed that he didn't activate it sooner. After some time, he gave a fake cough, Nightwing, how long before I can do that? And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.